We're live, by the way, Stephen. He just hit his knee. Or hurt his knee. Yeah. I didn't hit it, I tweaked it. Tweaked it. Hello again. Welcome to our internet show. Where we talk about the magical world of board games. Last night I watched Julie and Julia. That's why I'm channeling Julia Childs, the really bad man. Oh, I like that movie. Yeah, that's what I've been wanting to watch recently. Yeah, I like I like that. Was that the one you were saying you didn't think I'd want to watch? Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I saw yeah. it. I think I saw it in theaters. <laughs> um, the chat's all reminiscing. We have the wrong uh, light bulbs in. <sighs> <laughs> Magic. Magic! <laughs> ah! Daylight bombs! Ah! Okay. Ah! Sizzle, sizzle, oh, sparkle. Oh man, that does hurt my eyes well. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. That's so right. Sparkle. Studio studio lights are so right. Emo, <gasps> sol- e- emo soliloquies and sparkling. Hello and welcome back <clears throat> to a Let's Play Learn and Play Board Games with Steve and Tiffany. Ah. Steve and Tiffany Learn and Play Keyforge. Yeah, that's what we're playing. Because doing. if there's anything I've learned about Keyforge is that you are always learning how to play it. That's true. So tonight we're playing Keyforge, which is a trade. It's not a trading card game. It's a collectible card game. It is a unique game, which is a something that Fantasy Flight Games has trademarked, and they have. Oh, it's a u- yeah unique game. It is a unique game, uh, and. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically like a TCG or a CCG. Discover um, Lands Unknown is also one of their unique games, and we'll see how yeah. many more unique games they keep making. We They're missed your gonna... type and your faces. Um. Yes, we missed your rapier wit. Uh, but yeah, so we've been on vacation for like six weeks or something from streaming. It's been a long time. Um, we took the month of December off from the internet, but we were still, like, broadcasting on the internet for part of it, and then we stopped throughout halfway through December and just was, like, cold turkey, no internet, anything. And she wants out. Um, but Zena's still eating, so we're good. And then in January, when we were going to start again, we were like, actually, let's just keep going with this. So we, we took a little bit of an extra vacation into January, and so that's, that's why we're starting now. Um... Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Angela. It was totally our pleasure to be part of that birthday, or Christmas surprise. Um, yeah. I feel so bad for Tracy, because she was apparently contacting me on, like, every social media platform she could figure out. Uh, but she eventually got me through my personal Facebook, which was interesting. So, um, also, I got a bad haircut yesterday. Let's talk about that. People are going to be tuning in and be like, this was the worst playthrough of Keyforge ever. And like, oh, whatever. Um, this is us. You want to talk about worst ever? Check worst out this haircut. haircut. Ever. What? Um, so, like, the guy I went to, it's, like, really bad in the back. It's, like, so short. Uh, he cut me for, like, a summer haircut and, like, also, like, a 12-year-old boy summer haircut. I don't... 12-year-old boys enjoying the summer. I... Normally have them cut it so that like the the colored part like in the top is like longest, but he just cut it so it's all the same height yeah, across. Yeah, it doesn't like taper. So it doesn't taper, and then like all the color has been cut out, which I'm fine with, um, because I can rebleach. That's I was like, no, it's cool that can be cut out. But yeah, he just like crazy low. So uh, it's gonna be hat season. <laughs> For a little while. See, it's good you didn't get that summer haircut in summer, because everybody would be like, why are you wearing that hat? That's true. Why are you wearing that hat? Yep. Um, so, anyway, uh, we're back. I did a patron post earlier today about the fact that we were back and that we're starting with Keyforge um, for our first stream back, because we have been playing Keyforge the most in 2019. This is our most played game of 2019, which isn't that hard to hit. We haven't played a huge number of games we've been busy right? well but it's like really easy to play several games in a row so just that um and also we played it a lot at the end of 2018 it was one of the games we took with us when we were traveling and we even have little keyforge boxes so steve has a keyforge box and then i have a keyforge box 
And in our Keyforge boxes, we have our decks and our tokens and stuff. So um, this is like the only box, Keyforge box, that we actually have. So um, yeah. Uh, let me just switch to that view and then zoom in a little. But um, yeah, so this is the decks, basically. And inside each of these decks, this <clears throat> box, which costs $9.99, is a sealed pack like this that has a card list for a pre-made deck and then it has these symbols here which tells you the faction and then it has a name and it's it's shrink wrapped yep. inside with a qr code um yeah. which we have to make sure we cover our qr codes in this string i was just going to mention that yeah so that's what's inside each of these and so each of these is a unique deck that you play the game with and it doesn't even have rules in this um you have to go online and download the rule book and the starter set box which you could buy but they're out of print also doesn't have rules it just has some tokens which we never got really? our hands that's on. right it doesn't have yeah rules. it doesn't you have rules you still have to go online to yeah yep they're on version one dot something of the living rules uh and they yeah. continue to update them uh and part probably partly because we didn't learn from like a s standard you okay? Printed rule book. There was some coughing. Uh, is we played many rules wrong in our first games and slowly figured out which rules were wrong. And now we think we're probably playing correctly. We played in we played in a tournament on Saturday and no one yelled at us, so I think we're fine. Um, but can you do dog things while well, I do setup? And talk a little bit more about the game structure. Yeah, uh, I think um, Zina's making a request. Yeah. So, uh, Keyforge is a collectible card game, but you don't actually... Every deck that comes in these boxes... Collectible deck game. It's a collectible deck game. Oh! Every deck is um, unique and has a unique name and has a unique card back, and so no two decks have the same back. And so... Oh, thank you, Angela. Um... We miss talking to you guys. Uh, but every deck is unique and different, and so you can't trade individual cards. All you can do is trade decks. So it's a little different. Um, we like it because if we're out someplace and like we like to support local game stores, we can just buy a deck or two decks and then like we just have them to play. So that's one of the ways that I've been like when I make rounds at stores, I'll buy a deck. Um, and yeah. So, we're going to play with, what do you, do you want to play? We have, we have a mix. We have some sealed decks that we've taken out of the boxes, but we've never played with. We have some decks that we've played a lot and that we really enjoy. And then we have some decks that we haven't played a lot with and we maybe don't enjoy, or like are a mix of them. So... Oh, one thing I do want to say randomly about Keyforge is many, 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 many other games that are in the, like, CCG collectible card game or limited limited card game or whatever all the cards have the same backs so if, if you're playing competitively it could be a thing if like you swapped cards like if there were card powers which made cards change sides of the table like usually if you're playing competitively your cards are sleeve. Like but, but but i just mean like in uh keyboards because every deck does have a unique back there's no question of card ownership so there are card rules where, like, you can take cards from your opponent and stick them under your cards or stuff like that, and, like, it's not, it's not a thing. It's just like, hey, I noticed that you two are talking to that thing on that stand. Yeah. Haven't done that in a while, you but, know what that means. So it's cool, so there's, like, oh. cards which can make cards, like, literally change sides or change control or whatever, and there's no question about them actually getting back to their owner at the end of the game, which I think is kind of neat. Yeah, but there's no deck building at all in this game, so you have no creative control over the makeup of your deck. So, yeah. Thank you, Angela. I already said thank oh, you. Said Just keep drinking. All right, so let's go ahead and play... I don't know. Do you want to play an old favorite? That's yours. That's your tournament deck. No, this you is have. yours. Mine I oh, right. I kept it in the box because I didn't like it. That's its wow. punishment. I mean, okay. If Do you, you want to give it, it, it to me? Do you want to try it? You've yeah, never played I'll try it. it. You can try that one. Okay. Do you want to go against your arch nemesis? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have a deck that's already my favorite. It's, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, Exor Chu, the Dubious and Abandoned. He's like my favorite deck. 
dubious and abandoned. Um, so I mean, I, sure, I'll play this deck that you hate against your favorite deck. That's a fair match. Fine, you can play your favorite deck. Otherwise, I mean, I can play Mentor of the Stairs again. That was a pretty good one. I mean, I'll just play the Emperor that bursts through Plunder, if you ever give me any choice. Voltamash the Badman Killer is pretty good. Uh, well, let's do this, because it uses six unique factions. Okay. I'll play a right. deck. So, Steve's going to play a deck he's never played before, but I played it in a tournament on Saturday, so there's that. Um, I and played against it. You did play against it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and play Voltamash the Madman Killer, which is one of my decks that I opened recently that is all my favorite factions. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's a Logos Disc Shadow Star. So, and we have a couple, like, promo items and things, but, um, we'll talk about stuff as we go. So, we, in Keyforge, your deck is made for you. Oh, are we matting? No, because the display, we can't really mat. Um, so in Keyforge, your deck is pre-made for you. You have no control over that. And, um, we're also... You can't build, you can't tweak, you can't you can't really do anything. So, um, when you have a deck that you like, you hold on to it. Um, keep and there's it, like it, keep it safe. Yeah, there's a trading market now for decks and things like that. Don't show the QR code to anybody. Yeah, because people can register your deck and then do things that we don't really know what they can do yet, but. Fantasy Flight's, like, really clear on don't share your QR code. It's like the, when people are re really excited, they got a new credit card or a uh, debit card, and they take a picture and tweet it with the number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, my favorite deck is a... Oh, anyway, so the decks are made up of uh, 36 cards. 37 cards. The one card has the name of your faction. This is your avatar, um, and it's unique art on every back. So... Steve's has unique art. It's like auto-generated. Um, and then the backside has the deck list so you can see it. Um, which I'll show. But then you have 36 cards, which are your deck, which you want to shuffle. Pretty good. And you know the difference between your deck and your avatar, because your avatar has your symbols at the bottom, whereas your deck has them at the top. So you're going to put your avatar some place where you can access it because your avatar is going to store your amber and your keys. I zoomed the camera in maybe a little too much. Let's... Oh, well that could be partially why. Maybe... 65? Yeah, I think that'll work. Alright. So you're going to put your avatar some place accessible to you during the game. And then you just need something that is counters. So some people use dice, some people use gemstones from other games, or like pennies. Um, we are using some plastic gemstones that we bought um, that are just plastic gems. And we're using the orange ones to track amber, which is a resource I'll talk about in a minute. And then we have some special gems that we have to represent the keys. Because in this game, the goal of the game is to forge three keys. And the first person to forge three keys wins immediately. So it's a race to forge keys. Each of these gemstones represents a key. Um, We're so apparently that. trying to unlock a vault, and the vault has, or many vaults, and the vaults have secret things. Ichi! Oi, oi, oi. She surprised me. Sorry. Ichi, you, you want me to do it? Because you need. Uh, Ichi, you want to play 52 card pickup? Um, then we have... Sorry, you're using the keys to unlock a vault, and whoever unlocks the vault, you get awesome things. Uh, but we're using these penny gems as our damage counters, or like stun towers, or power tokens, or just any old thing. So, that's what we're using. There's some like official cardboard stuff that you can get, but... Um, the cardboard stuff, you can only get it in the starter set, and they sold out the starter set really like, quickly, and you can't get it anymore, so it's kind of like whatever. Then, um, you can use a dice, but this is a chain counter card, this is a promo thing. 
But honestly, you can just use a, a die if you have that. Um, like a d20 will work perfectly. Um, I'm just going to use... I don't even think I have anything in here that would need that, but... Cool. Then we'll figure out who goes first, and we'll start playing. But the game is really simple. You're just trying to forge three keys. At the start of your turn, if you have six amber on your avatar, you will... If you have six amber on your avatar, you forge a key automatically at the start of your turn. Nothing you can do about that. So you forge a key. You cannot forge a key in the middle of your turn unless you have a card that lets you do so, um, which Steve will have, you two devs. Did you look at your deck at all? Nope. Okay, well... I looked at the card list a little bit. Um... I remembered you had this cool dragon that... Hey. Him, but... Okay. Um... Yeah. So... Uh, start of your turn, if you have six amber on your avatar, you forge a key. First person to forge three keys wins. Otherwise, the game is pretty straightforward. Every deck has three factions in them. There are always three unique factions. They're houses. At the start of your turn, you're going to declare a house that you are going to play that turn, and you can only activate cards and creatures of that house. You can only play cards or creatures of that house, and you can only discard cards or creatures of that house. You can only do anything with that house, unless you have a card that says otherwise. Which is like the golden rule of this game, is the unless you have a card that says otherwise. So. But there's a there is a rule that supersedes the golden rule, which is the first player can only play or player discard one card in their turn. So in the rules, it's like this is the only rule that breaks the golden rule. So that was a rule we got wrong most of the first times we played it. The first turn. No. Uh, hey, Kabuki kid. Um. Okay. So we're gonna figure out who goes first. I don't know where my phone is. One of the things that has happened since I gave up Twitter for a month is I lose my phone a lot now because I don't use it all the time. I don't know where it is. Are we schwazing? Yeah. Every time. So that means Steve goes first, so he gets seven cards, and I get six cards, and we both have the option to mulligan. If we mulligan, that means we're going to, we don't like our hand, we're going to shuffle it into our deck, and we're going to draw one less card for our turn. And you can only mulligan once. You can only mulligan once. <gasps> <clears throat> he doesn't really know how to play that bar. So. I know all I need to know about playing this deck. Yep. I'm gonna mulligan. I'm gonna mulligan. Wow. Kabuki has a friend that has 16 decks. We have 14 decks. I think we have. We have an unequal number between us, I think. Mm -mm. No? Well, if you take that one, yeah. That's fine, I'll just go buy another one. We have 14, because we had 12. And we got well, two I more. have seven, and you had eight, I thought. Not including two. You have seven? No, we eight. had 12 Sorry. total. I have eight. One, two, three, four, I have seven, five, and this six, is eight. Seven, eight. So we have 16 decks. Wow. We have 16 decks. I mean, that's how they get you, where they're like, oh, you really like this faction? Keep buying decks until you get this faction. Or, oh, you like this faction combo? Keep buying decks until you get that faction combo. Hopefully you'll get the faction you need. But the flip side... And also, you work at a game store, so you get an employee discount. So it's not really that big of a deal. The flip side is, like, most decks are pretty playable. Like, you don't have to buy a bunch of cards to get a playable deck. But... Not Korugi Shuffle. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, alright. It's not great, but I'll go with it. Okay, so Steve's gonna start. So, the first player of the game can only play one card. Only one card. It's all they can do. 
And when you play a card, it comes into the game activated. So it is exhausted. It comes into play exhausted, which means it's slightly askew. So I askew that way. I think Steve goes full on 90 degrees. Um, so Steve will play a single card, if he so wishes, um, to the play area. But he can discard as many cards as he wants. So of the faction that he says. So he has to declare at the very start of his turn a house that he wants to play. I thought it was player discard one card. Pretty sure. It's, okay, then player discard one, yeah. I was wrong. You play or discard one. So the person sure. I played with in the tournament cheated. Maybe. Because otherwise that would be broke. Find my phone. Let me just get rid of it. Let's not delete them. Uh, oh, there's my phone. Like I said, we always think we're getting closer to playing Keyforge correctly. but We both have the rules downloaded onto our phones. Cause... I'm like an idiot. I deleted the one which was more up to date. So I only have the old one. Uh, yeah, I'm My rolls are from July 20th, so they're pretty out of date. I'm going to play Sound the Horns, a discard card, which, oh, first thing that happens when I, okay, so, first I would have forged a key, obviously I don't have one. First I chose a house, I chose Brobnar, which is this sort of flames, angry people one. And then when yeah. I play this card, I get an amber. So, that's the first thing that happens, the amber goes onto my house card. Oh, it's a good first card. Yeah. Uh, and then when I play it, so then I do the action that's on it. So it has a play keyword, so when I play it, the play keyword activates. Discard cards from the top of my deck until I either discard a Brobnar creature or run out of cards. And if I discarded a Brobnar creature this way, I put it into my hand. So, no. Nope. 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 Yep. Yep. Okay, so this goes into my hand. These are still in it's my It's player discard. discard one, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so then that was played so it gets discarded, because it's not an artifact. Yep. Oh, your turn? That was my turn, right, because I can't do anything else. Yep. Alright, so it's my turn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and declare that I'm playing Dis. Playing what? Oh, the worst part of playing... This faction, and they named it that so you would get angry enough to use these cards because these cards are mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Dust Imp into play. So Dust Imp is in play, and normally we would be sitting across from each other, but for sure. And we're just use. trying not to like look at each other. Um. So then I'm gonna also play. So Dust Imp is a creature. It's just gonna go in exhausted. Um. And so there's some interesting info about creatures. So creatures have a attack and health value. It is the one right there on the left. And then they might have an armor. So that's the one on the right. Um, so and that Dustin, number on the left is called their power. Their power, yes. Um, and then I'm going to play another creature, which is Toskin. Toxin. Um, and they both come in exhausted, and neither of them has a play power. So some creatures will have a word that just says play, and it's in bold, and that means that you do what it says when you play it. Neither of these have that, so I won't do that. And then I'm going to play an artifact. Artifacts go back here. Um, and artifacts also come into play exhausted, but these were all discards. Uh, <sighs> don't you have a pile for those? Oh my god. Uh, and so my turn is done, and I symbolize that by everything that was exhausted in my play area is now active. So everything gets put right side up, and then I draw back up to my hamlet, which is by default six cards. And now it's Steve's turn. To declare his house choice. Oh, you know what? I saw that. Wow. Okay. I'm going to play Untamed. Untamed is the beastly faction of beasty beast things, mm -hmm. but not to be confused with squishy, tentacled, clawed, gross things. That's what this is. Uh, I'm going to play Witch of the Eye, who has a power when she reaps, and I'm going to play Nipple Ape. They come in exhausted. Uh, Nipple Ape ign ignores Taunt and Elusive, which doesn't matter now, but could. Um, and so I am done playing those. I am going to ready these cards. Now it's your turn. 
and then I am going to draw back up to my pond limit. Uh, one th did you mention playing to the line? To the oh, not yet. Yeah. When you play a creature, this will come into effect. Uh, now. Yeah, let's just make it come into effect now. Um. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and play. Uh. Shadow. Or I'm gonna play Dis. No, I'm gonna play Shadows. So I'm playing a new faction. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and play another creature. When you play a creature to your line of creatures, you cannot play them into, you can't play them between existing creatures. You can only play to the outsides of your line. So you can play on the left or right. And sometimes positioning matters because sometimes creatures will have effects for their neighbors. So the neighbors are only the ones directly adjacent to them. These don't, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in Moon Cursor and Naughty the Thief. Uh... So there's a designer's we'll note I think at this in the KeyForge rules somewhere because uh, Richard Garfield made this uh, also the original creator of Magic, um, but That's he sure. said basically originally when he made Magic he thought that people would get into the deck building less and just sort of play with what they had. So the idea behind KeyForge was just to let people jump into playing without deck building being something they would need to focus on. So I think it has a it does have a different audience, and I do. I am enjoying not having the weight in the back of my head of my deck could be better if I were deck building. Um, so I think it definitely feels a little more casual in that regard. Yeah. Like we can just play each other and be reasonably competitive without deck building. With the caveat that if you want a better deck, buy it. Which is, yeah, that's yeah, kind that's, of the myth. That's the downside. Uh, my turn. Yes. Um, I enjoy deck building, but we get a little too consumed in the deck building. Um, so, like, with Destiny, we definitely spent way more money on Destiny in about the same time period as Keyforge, uh, because we were deck building and trying to build specific combos, which meant we were buying a lot of boosters or individual cards to try and get the thing that we wanted to build the deck that we wanted. Um, whereas we, in this, we have no yeah. control over that, and it's just like, oh, I really like this deck, I'm going to play with this deck until I don't like it anymore. Um, and I now have, I think, like, three decks that I really enjoy, um, and so I'm happy playing those for right now. I don't feel like I've played any of them out, and Steve has some decks that he really enjoys, and then we have decks that are just, like, silly, weird, wacky. So. Um, I think I am just going to play Untamed, and I am just going to read twice. Your turn. Okay. And then I will ready this and not draw back up to. Oh, I forgot to draw back up. Why didn't you draw back up? I didn't plan it. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, that is so good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play Shadows, and I'm gonna play Treasure Map, which gains me an Amber. Uh, treasure map. If I have not played any other cards this turn, which I haven't, I gain three amber. So I'm going to go ahead and get three more amber. Uh, then for the remainder of the turn, I cannot play cards. That's okay, I can still activate cards. So I have two shadows cards out. I'm going to go ahead and reap with moon crusher. Moon cursor, sorry, because it doesn't make sense to fight with them. So reap means that you just get an amber. That creature goes out and gets you an amber. And then I'm going to activate Naughty the Thief, who is naughty, and steals one amber from Steve. So, mm -hmm. yoink! So I take it from his, and oh, I now... steal one amber, not yes. even capture. Okay. Yes. So now I have six amber. Um, I can't play any more cards because of the treasure map, and I've activated all the shadows I can. So my turn's over, and because I have six amber, I will say check. Which means that at the start of my turn, unless Steve does something to this amber, I will forge a key. Hey, Charles! Wow, we have so many net, so many net runners. I really like deck building net run, but it's too complicated. The world got too big to rest. Okay. So yeah, I want to I want to play Charles directly with you. Yes, I want to do this one. Um, I am going to play Sanctum, which is probably my favorite faction. It is. Uh, I'm going to play Take Hostages, which gets me an amber. 
And when I play it for the remainder of the turn, each time a friendly creature fights, it captures one amber. Uh, I'm going to play Staunch Knight. Staunch Knight gets plus two power while it is on a flank. Which means it's on the outside. So Staunch Knight is exhausted. Uh, and then I'm going to play Terms of Redress, which gets me an amber. Choose a friendly creature to capture two amber, and I will choose Staunch Knight to capture two amber. So capture means he takes the amber from my play area, puts it on the creature that was capturing, and it stays there until that creature is destroyed. When the creature is destroyed, um, the opponent who destroyed it gets the ember. Yeah. So one thing that is interesting about Keyforge, uh, going back up to six, one, two, three, compared to some other card games, is the cards don't have a cost. You just mm -hmm. have to declare a house and play them. So you can play as many things as are in the house in your hand. But because your decks are basically evenly balanced between the three houses, you know, you have a roughly even probability. So it's kind of nice not to have to worry about, like, an economic cost to the cards. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead... Play, play what? <sighs> um, I'm, like, running out of space because this deck is a creature deck. So we're going to, like, stagnate a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play these three creatures. None of them have play effects. Oh, no, sorry. This one does. If my opponent has no amber in a game two, Steve sadly has amber. Could I do something about that? No. Um, okay. So then I can activate any steel cards that I want, um, or any discards that I want um, that are not already exhausted. So I'll go ahead and use dump, dust imp, sorry, to attack Witch of the Eye. Um, so Witch of the Eye has oh. a power of three. Darn it. Dust Imp has... I forgot to do this when I reaped with her, so it's fine because it already happened, but I should have used her reap power when I reaped with her. Okay. Dust Imp has a power of two. Witch of the Eye has a power of three. They do damage simultaneously to each other, so Dust Imp's going to take three damage, which the power is only two, so that'll actually destroy Dust Imp. But when Dust Imp is destroyed, I gain two Amber, so I'm okay with that. Which of the eye will take the two damage that Dust Imp deals to it. So which of the eye will take two damage, which is not enough to knock which of the eye out, which is a Pokemon turn. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and reap with Toxin. Toxin, when I reap, I will get an Amber, which we'll just say these. We don't have like enough of the little kinds. So we say these big ones are five. Um, my opponent discards a random card from their hand. I was hey, Linico. I was eyeing that card and not happy about it. This one. Ooh, Grasping Vines. Yep. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go ahead and activate Lash of Broken Dreams. Keys will cost you plus three. During my next turn. During your next turn. So that is an effect. Um, and then all my creatures are no longer exhausted. And I draw back up to six. Also, check. Oh, well, thank you. Linico was just hosting a weekly Keyforge tournament. Do you do sealed or do you do, uh, like, bring decks? What's the format of the tournament? Also, it's out of focus. Down below. All right, I'm going to play Brobnar. Brobnar. Love me some Brobnar. All right, I'm going to play Bumpsy. Oh, I love Bumpsy. You lose one ember. I love Bumpsy so much. I love Bumpsy. Uh, Bumpsy is exhausted. Yes. Making you lose amber is hard. But I'm also going to play Ganger Chieftain. I'm a ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Mm-hmm. Because Bumpsy is going to fight Snudge. Because Snudge is awful. Snudge is amazing. Uh, so Snudge is power four. So Bumpsy is power five. Bumpsy will take care of Snudge. But Snudge will deal four damage before it goes out. Yep. 
And now I have enough room again. Oh. And then I will play Cannon, which has an action of dealing two damage to a creature. It's an artifact. These things are exhausted. I will unexhaust them, and then I will draw four cards. Two, three, four. All right. Oh, that should have been really exhausted. Um, okay. I am going to go ahead and play... I haven't been in an Archon tournament, but I've been in a Sealed tournament. Those were... It was okay. I wasn't super happy with the deck, which is what Steve's playing. Um, I didn't force him to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Customs Office, which is... It comes in exhausted, but when it's there, my... Oh, no, sorry, it doesn't. My opponents must pay me one order, one in order to play an artifact. Mm -hmm. And I have intimate knowledge of that deck and know there's a lot of artifacts. So that's a good card for me to have. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and play Relentless Whispers. Deal two to a creature. If this damage destroys the creature, I steal an amber. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it to... Sorry, Bumpsy. I could take out Witch of the Eye. I'm going to do Witch of the Eye. Yep. Also, the card just gives me an amber, mm -hmm. uh, and then I will steal an amber as well. Yep. So I get that. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and play uh, Ghostly Hand, which doesn't do me any good. If my opponent has exactly one, I steal it. He doesn't. But it does give me two amber just from the straight two amber on the side. So I am again at check. Oh, wait, but I can do more. Um, I'll go ahead and um, activate Naughty. To steal another, and then I will go ahead and fight with Moon Cursor, and I will go ahead and take out Ganger Chief because you need to take out no poison. Any damage oh. dealt takes it out. Um, so yeah. And skirmish means it doesn't get dealt damage in return. Yes. So Ganger Chief is dead, and Moon, Cur wow. Moon Cursor is fine, but I get to steal one more. Wow. Which actually, if I had played this mm -hmm. in the correct order, I could have. I could have now played this. You don't have to fight last. You can fight at any time. So I could have played Ghostly Hand because fighting lets me steal one, and then I would have stolen his last one. But we won't say that I did that. Um, so that's my shadows, and I am done. And I will draw back up. Also check. Yeah, I love this. I love customs office. I like this deck. It's a good deck. I don't know if I like it more than my other one. All right, I'm like gonna lot. play Untamed. We will start. So apparently, you're not capturing from me, so this card isn't super useful. Play Word of Returning. Deal one to damage to each enemy creature for each amber on it. Return all amber from those creatures to my pools. Would be cool if you were capturing amber, but you're not. Uh, then I'm going to play. Troop Call. Return each friendly nipple creature from my discard pile and from play to my hand. So I will get one amber for that. Yep. I don't think I have any others. No, I don't think you do. That's the only problem. That Troop Call is great if you have a nipple heavy deck, but this deck only has two nipple apes in yeah. it, I believe. So it's not super helpful. But There's a nipple beast, though. Did I get the amber from that? Nipple ape? No. I, I didn't get the amber from this. Correct, because I had two. And I got you one. You did get the amber. From Troop Call. You had one. I had one. Okay. Um, Spot Monk says that their local board game cafe has a reversal tournament where you bring your worst deck and your opponent plays with it. We're going to compete in one of those tournaments here in a couple weeks. Uh, Cloudcap Games here in Portland is doing a similar tournament. Um, and we have to figure out what our worst decks are. So I'm going to play Nipple Ape. I have a feeling mine is the Four Horsemen deck, but... And Ancient Bear, so they are both exhausted. And then I will exhaust both of them. And I will draw back up to you. Okay. Two. Um, I forge a key at the start of my turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm pretty close to my second as well. I'm going to go ahead and play Logos. It's the first time I've played Logos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play... Doc Bookton, which is going to go right there, but I'm going to go I don't know what you do with this deck. I, yeah, see? I, I, yeah. I know what I do with that deck, but, yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a lab work, which lets me, when I play it, I get an amber, and then I also get to archive a card. So archive is a new keyword. Archive means you take a card from your hand, it's any card you want, and you just go ahead and you put it over to the side. And you can, at the start of your turn, before your turn begins, you can pick up all of your archive cards, or they can just hang out there. So it helps like clear out your hand and store stuff that you might not be playing for a while. So I'm going to archive that, and I already got the amber from it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and play Dr. Escotera, which has a play effect, but it doesn't help me. Normally I would gain one amber for each forged key my opponent has. He doesn't have any. Sad for me. But there you go. Um, and then that'll be my turn, so these two will be unexhausted. And I will draw back up to six. And then it's Steve's turn. Alright, I'm going to play Sanctum. Uh, Staunch Knight is going to reap. Gets me one amber. And then I'm just going to play three artifacts. Oh, I mentioned, I forgot to mention check. Uh, you have to pay me one amber for every artifact you play. It's fine. I'm just gonna Portland. I'm just gonna discard those three artifacts because I can't get rid of your artifacts. One, two, three. Your turn. That's a really good combo, Chuck. Um, we're in Portland, not Cortland. Sorry. Um, port. Uh, the four horsemen decks are like, meh. Uh, they haven't sold for like a really long time, but it really matters what other cards with them. Uh, I'll sh we'll play around with the four horsemen deck, don't worry about it. Maybe I mean, the next any one I play. Anything rare and with cool things will... People will be excited about. Uh, I played against someone at the tournament right. this weekend who had a time traveler deck, which you have a time traveler logos card and then a card which gives them help in the future. Yeah. Um, I'll not pick up that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and play, um, I'm going to go ahead and play Shadows. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play Urchin. When Urchin comes into play, I steal one. Yep. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and play Silvertooth. Uh, Silvertooth enters play ready, so that's pretty nice. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and use Silvertooth to reap. And I will go ahead and use Moon, Cu Moon Cursor to fight uh, Ancient Bear. So Ancient Bear's dead. Does Assault only work when Ancient Bear attacks? Yes. Uh, and I get to steal another one. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Naughty to steal one. Um, and that will be my turn. And then I will draw back up. Four horsemen's aren't actually as rare. Um, I feel like time, there are other rare decks. Um, there's a lot of four horsemen decks, and we at the shop that I work at, we have known of at least three four horsemen decks coming from like the shop. One of which was opened in a steel tournament. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I got nothing. I'm just gonna play. Two exhausted sanctum. They will ready, and I will draw two cards. Okay. Um. Uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and play Logros. I'm gonna put Spangler Blocks into play, which is a silly one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put Bat Drone over there. Love me some Bat Drone. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and play Dimensional Door. From the remainder of the turn, any Amber you would gain from Reaping is stolen from your opponent instead. I do love you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead <laughs> and reap. With that one. Is the goal to make sure there's a second me... game? Because I think you're failing. <laughs> which lets me draw a card and then I steal. And then here's a fun one. Um, I would like to reap with Docker, Dr. Escotera, but he doesn't have any more to steal. Which is sad for me. Um, so I don't think I get any? Yeah, I don't think you get any. Yeah, so it's fine. Just know that if I hadn't played that, I could be checking mm -hmm. right now. And then I draw back up. Yeah, uh... Linico over in Twitch is saying that his friendly game store has sold, or their friendly game store has sold eight horseman decks that they know of. So the horsemen aren't like super, super crazy rare. They're cool, but yeah. I think the four horsemen was like the third deck I got. So. But if you go look on eBay, there's four horsemen decks going for like 16 bucks. So it really depends what other cards are with them, and if they make sense. I think we're just going to play Brognara. I will play two Brognara cards. They're in the line. <laughs> They're exhausted. Um, I will discard these two cards. They will ready, and I will draw four. Yeah, I'm... are you sure you don't want to use that? Oh yeah, I'm gonna use that. Uh, I'm gonna shoot Moon Cursor because I hate Moon Cursor. There you go. Now you're thinking with portals. Mm -hmm. Um. Still don't know what to do with the deck. I know what you do, but you're not doing it. I don't think you can do it though, with what I've been doing to you. <laughs> no, I know. Um. I'll go ahead and use this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play Fear, and I'll return uh, Looter Goblin to your hand. Because I don't like Looter Goblin. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll go ahead and play Shaffles. Shaffles is a jerk. At the end of your turn, your opponent will lose one oh Amber for like ever. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and play Three Fates, which gets me an Amber. Destroy the three most powerful creatures, uh, Fire Spitter, Protectrix, and Bumpsy, please. What if they're tied? I pick. Oh, because the active player always picks all times. Yep. Um, I'm not going to do this, because I love this card. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it yet. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and reap, so Toxin makes you randomly lose a card. No, it's true. I'll take Uh, and then I'll go ahead and reap with... Oh, I reap with Tuscan and pick it up. So, that check, and then reap with that one. And then, uh, I'll reap with the tear. And then for... Doesn't matter. But keys cost plus three for your next turn. And then I'll draw back three. Uh, check. Yeah, I should have sold my horseman immediately, but because I would have made money on it, but meh. Meh. It's fun to play with. And I can say I have one. Well, whatever. Full moon. For the rain of the turn, gain an amber each time I play a creature. I'll play a Dew Fairy. Dew Fairy! Which gets me an amber. 
Uh, and then I will play Annihilate, which gets me in there. Oh, no, these are all unexhausted. Uh, and then I will play Vigor, heal up to three damage from the creature, which I don't, but I will just be adding Amber from that. Uh, and then this Nipple Ape. We'll just read. Okay. Uh, and at the start of my turn, I yeah. forge a key. So I forge my last key. And I have forged three keys, and I win. So. That's Key Forge! Um, what do you do with this deck? You, well, so first, hang on. So I, I want to use this opportunity to highlight one of the annoying things about this game. Is that I have played this deck three times now, and I like this deck, and I know what to do with this deck. Steve has played that deck never. Um, this is his first time playing it, and he played against it, so he saw me play it, uh, and I even got two keys when I played you? I don't remember. One. Maybe one key. One in a bit. Um, so he, he's, like, he's seen me play it, but he doesn't, he didn't look through the cards, so he didn't really know how to play it, um, and strategy. Because when you get a Keyforge deck, one of the first things you do when you open it is you look through the cards to see what the abilities are, and as you learn the cards, you can just look at the, the Which card list. we usually don't do. We just play with decks without looking at the cards. Yes. Because it's more fun. Because it's more fun, and we like to figure it out as we go. So, there's that. This deck is so mean. This deck is about stealing Amber from your opponents just just continually. I don't even think there's a capture ability in this deck. No. It's literally it's just, just steal. all steal destroy, and there's so many creatures. There's so many creatures in this deck, and they're all pretty low level, but they have some pretty interesting, like, steal and reap abilities. Um, so the most part on this one is, is like, yeah, that's cool, you can kill me, I'm just gonna keep coming out with just random butt-tons of creatures that just keep stealing from you. Um, Steve's deck does not have that many creatures, and most of the creatures that his deck has are from Brobnar, which means they hit hard. And Brobnar, the faction Brobnar, really is into fighting. And so that faction forces you into fighting. There's a lot of cards in that deck that say you can fight, like, use this card, it's a Brobnar card, you activate it, and then you can fight with a friendly creature. You can ready and fight with a friendly creature, but you have to fight. And so that deck is very fighting heavy. Super fighting heavy. In addition to being fighting heavy, that deck wants you to forge keys not on your turn. So not at the beginning of your turn. And it has three cards which do that. It has three cards that let you forge keys in the middle of your turn, which is the only way I've actually ever managed to forge keys with that deck. But all of those cards are in Untamed. So you have to set it up so that you can take an Untamed turn to gain a bunch of Amber to enough that you will forge. So you need to set it up where like your opponent is like, oh, they've got some amber, but it's fine. And then you do a bunch of stuff on your turn to get a bunch of amber in the middle of the turn, and then you play that last card that lets you forge. And the number one way to get amber in your turn is there's a card called Oath of the Brotherhood, and there's two of them in there. And when yeah, you discard never... that card, you can discard that card. It's a Sanctum card. So normally you would only be able to activate it when you're playing Sanctum. But it's Omni, which means that you can activate it when you're playing any faction. It's Sigil of the Brotherhood, that's it. So you do an Untamed round, you have one or two of these, one of these, in your area yeah. already, you discard this, you sacrifice it, and then all your Sanctum Knights that you have out can reap for you, get a ton of Amber, and then you play the Untamed card that lets you forge in the middle of the round. Yeah. However, if you can't keep Sanctum dudes up, you're done for. Which, I only had one Sanctum creature until, like, mostly the end of the game. Yeah. And one of the things that I learned with that deck, and you played it in the first round, is you hold on to the horn. So this is another trick that I learned with this deck, because I played with it four times this weekend. There's not a lot of Brobnar creatures in this deck, and some of them are, like, really stupid hard to play. Like, there's a dragon in here that I've never managed to play because you have to have at least seven or, seven or more amber. And that was my goal this game. I just wanted seven amber to play it. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I've I got close yeah. and my stuff just kept getting stolen. So. so there's not a lot of Brobnar creatures in this deck. So you play Sound the Horn, which lets you discard your entire deck until you get a Brobnar creature or until you run out of cards. So I would purposely play this card once I already had most all of my Brobnar creatures out 
to cycle my deck so I could get more Sanctum or put things back yeah. in that had been killed. And there's only one of these in. So it's one of those where it's a very circumstantial deck. I haven't figure out, figured out another way to win with this deck, but it took me four games to realize that that was the only way to win with this deck. Yeah. The first game I played with this deck, I won with that method, and then I couldn't get it to work for the rest of the tournament. I just would like never have enough Amber, or I couldn't get enough creatures, or I would only have Bravnar up and they kept tanking out my Sanctum on purpose because Sanctum has some really interesting like area effect things. So, yeah. So that's kind of one of like the gripes of Keyforge is that you don't have a choice of what's in your deck and so you have to play with what you're given. So it's a lot of fun to sit there and figure out how do I make this thing work? But once you figure it out, if it only works a certain way, it's less interesting. And then you're like, well, I have this deck it's very circumstantial and only works sometimes, but it otherwise just you get mulled over. So what do I do with it? I can't take it apart. I can't scrap it for for bits and pieces. Yeah, and you can't. Uh, you can't sell can't it. Can't take it. I mean, I'm sure there are people who play KeyForge where you can swap cards between decks, like unofficial KeyForge. I'm sure there's people that do that. But... Yeah. Um. There's no archiving in that deck. Yep. Yeah, so that one's a tough one. Robnar. Robnar. Sorry. Alright. So now what do you want now which decks do you want to play? Uh let's do a seal. You wanna do a seal? Yeah, let's do a seal. And okay. then maybe we'll play the last one by playing one of our favorite decks. I mean I already did, so Yeah. I haven't played a favorite deck. Hi, <laughs> you you picked it. Mm -hmm. All right. I wanted to play with it because I it was very vexing to you, so I wanted to see. How no, it, it wasn't made. vexing. It was frustrating. Sorry, There's it was a difference. Frustrating to you. All right, I uh, have can two... I have my amber back? I don't know how many you have. Don't worry about it. We'll figure mm -hmm. it out later. Mm -hmm. Let's just have a central amber. Um, I have two sealed, but I know the factions on those. I also have two seals. Why don't we do opponent X the sealed one? Does the opponent get to look at the deck list? Nope. Oops. Sorry, I showed you. Somebody's gonna register your deck before you can. Oh my god. I just love the name of that card. Okay. I'm gonna shuffle these so you don't know which one I was saying that. Good night, Lenico! Thanks for reading! Um. Okay. I have two decks. Um, one is a Bravnar. Logos, or Lagos, I don't know how you say it, Untamed, one is a Shadows, Untamed Logos. Um, I have Round Muckrager Shagur, or uh, Lorubane, the Minter of the Stairs. Okay, my decks are both Untamed Brobnar, but one is Dis and one is Shadows. We have Cider, Guru, Luca, Wagner. And Z Peacock, the Tower Trap. I mean, oh, now they're not the same. They're one off. I want you to play Z Peacock, the Tower Tracker. Okay. I want you to play Muckraker. He just knows I really want to play Mentor of the Stairs because I want to be a mentor for those stairs. I just know if I let you anywhere near shadows, you will do shenanigans. So you give me Brognar instead. That's okay. This one has the, like the best card name ever in it. You'll see it. No, this one has the best card name ever in it. Okay. Um. So when you open a deck, you're gonna take your list. You're gonna register it on the KeyForge app, which we totes have. Um. The app doesn't do anything <laughs> except for. Register cards. It's supposed to do win loss it's... tracking for your decks eventually. So you'll eventually, be but it just hasn't. It's weird. I think, and yeah, people probably do. All right. Cool. So are we not? We're not looking through your cards, right? No. Um, but once you have decks in, like you can they like list them, and then you're supposed to be able to track win losses but you can't um like there's no it says coming soon on everything maybe there's been an update i haven't updated in a while 
Maybe, maybe you can do it now. I doubt it. Alright, um, later, Lee. Lee, Lee Noko? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, there was an update. You can do win loss counter for casual play! Woohoo! Alright, I'm gonna update that. So I can track how. What was the deck I just played with? The worst deck ever. It was the Madman Killer. I love the Madman. The Boltonash. The Madman Killer. <laughs> girls! 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 <laughs> the wind is pretty bad. Right now. Hey. It, itchy. <laughs> itchy, it's okay. Hopefully right. the shenanigans we did with the audio should make it so the barks aren't deafening anymore. Is it supposed to cap the noise? <gasps> Woohoo! You can totally track casual wins for casual play. Did it? I'm gonna. What was the one you just played? Oh, Mimball Skull. Yeah. So um, I try. I have that one live. So so far, it doesn't work. <laughs> You can only increase. <laughs> you can't track losses. All you can do is have positives, but you can't go negative on losses. Oh, oh, I get it. I understand. So I've played, uh, so, so Mimball Spawn of, of Rinktangle has, uh, has been played five times and has lost. Oh, because other people have your deck? No. no, I've played it four times this weekend and then you just Got played it. it. So, like, it tracks, but it doesn't show the tra It doesn't show. It's weird. It's a weird system. All right. Anyway. Um, it doesn't show you the stats of the casual play. It just is like, yeah. But we can use it to figure out what our worst decks are, which will be helpful for our worst deck. Okay. I registered this deck. ZP Cox. Tower. All right. So we like to play where with I mean in sealed tournaments we look at the cards, but we like to play uh, just with us where we don't look through our decks, so we don't um. Like, look at card specifics. We love to look at the deck list, but, like, we're not to the point where we know all the cards yet, so. And we know some of them. Like, we can now start just look at the names of the cards in the deck list and be like, oh, this deck is probably going to be. Yeah. All right. Would you like to cut Super Matter? Yeah, I'll cut your deck. Oh, what was the one you just played? What was the name of that deck? Mm -hmm. I'll cut that deck. Stop it. Yes. Every time. Yeah, you can have the pity of going first. Round Muckraker Shagur versus ZP Cock, the Tower Tracker. Traps towers. Oh my god, that card's amazing! Very weird. Uh, I'm in mode. Oh wow! So the new faction, the new set of cards comes out at the end of the month, which is so weird. I know. I thought it was like three months, but it's been out. For three. It came out oh, in November. There have there's a thing where like the current 
season type thing, and, uh... I don't know if we'll play the next season. No, but I meant for, like, tournaments. Like, there was a thing at the store where it was, like, there's a thing that I was at the end of January. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's the new season. I don't think they've done oh. a new set for a little while. Maybe, yeah. I'd hope they don't do a new set, because they haven't even managed to print enough well, for the first set. Yeah, no, it's it's the end of, like, the current win-loss tracking, and then, so your current faction at your store who won the most will get swag and stuff. Alright, you start. Alright, I'm gonna play Untamed. And start it off with a little ancient bear. Rawr. The You play one card. You're the one that cheats on Strawzzy, so you go yep. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give it a try. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead I'm and play. Um. I'm gonna play a Brobnar. Brobnar, man. All right. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and play Bumpsy. You don't have anything for me to take, so it's fine. And then Lunar Goblin! I love Lunar Goblin! Get the house! Ba -da -ba -da -ba. And then that's all I'll do. And then I'll draw two cards, because I'm done. Alright, I'm gonna play. Oh, I should have redrawn the other I'm gonna play Untamed. Dust Pixie. Dust Pixie gets me two and a. Uh, and then I'm going to play the Nepenthe Seed, which has an Omni. I can sacrifice to return a card from this card. Very nice. And then I'm going to draw two cards. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play Logos. I'm going to play Scrambler Storm. You cannot play action cards on your next turn. Okay. Um, but I gain an Amber. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Experimental Theory. Uh, Looter Goblin. Uh, Yeah, Looter Goblin is part of all houses, but he is stunned. We symbolize stun by putting them upside down. Stun means that they need to be used before they can be. But we do also have. Oh, we also have these promo stun cards, so we'll use that. Um, so Looter Goblin is stunned. Um, however, this creature now belongs to all houses, so I can still use them. Can you use a creature the turn it's been stunned? Yes. Just uh, you can't use it if it's been exhausted. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and use this creature, which doesn't do anything, but it removes the stun, but they're still exhausted. So oh, no, but if he's exhausted, you can't use him. So he's it's not stun, exhausted. Stun and exhaust this creature. Oh, he's stunned and exhausted, so I can't use him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, and that was my turn. All right. Well, I can't play. Can't play action cards. I'm gonna play an artifact, Brobnar, Gauntlet of Command. I can ready and fight with a friendly creature when I activate it. It's exhausted. It's not ready when it turns over. But... Okay. I'm gonna play Fogify. Your opponent cannot use creatures to fight on their next turn. Uh, but I gain an Amber. And then I'll go ahead and also play Interdimensional Gaff, which gives me an Amber. Um, if an opponent forges a key on their next turn, which you're not going to, you must give me your remaining amber. Uh, and this would have been unexhausted, so now I'm going to use them to unstun them. Uh, and so at the end of my turn, he's back. And then I draw back up. And it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to play Shadow. I should put um, Umbra into play. Who when he fights, he steals one. Uh, and then... Hey, Hero Logic! Happy New Year! Um, okay. Um... Uh, I'll go ahead and play... 
untamed. I'm going to go ahead and put a Dew Fairy into play, and then I will go ahead and put Nocturnal Maneuver! Best name for a card. Uh, I get to exhaust up to three creatures. I'm going to exhaust all three of those. Uh, did I gain the Amber for playing it? I think I did. And then I'm actually going to reap with Looter Goblin, because he belongs to all houses now. For the remainder of the turn, gain one each time an enemy creature is destroyed. Not happening. But I still get a thing. Uh, and Wait, then you I... still get a thing? Because I reap with him. Ah, okay. Um, and then I will draw back up. Wow. Wow! Wow. Looking up the rule. All right, I'm gonna play shadows. Hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'll just play untamed. Uh, do one damage for each friendly creature in play. I can divide this among any number of creatures. I will kill you. So, I have three Looter Goblin. Goodbye, Looter Goblin. I was gonna make two. you better. Uh, and then the last damage will go to Dew Fairy. Uh, okay. And then these are my cards. I'll go ahead and do Grub Bear. Robnar, man! I'm gonna do Headhunter, and then I will do, um, Blood of Titans onto Dew Fairy. Oh, I can't do that. You can upgrade anybody. Yes. But it doesn't make them that house. Yeah, correct. So Dew Fairy will just get this upgrade. Dew Fairy is plus five power now. She's ripped. Uh, check. Um. Yeah, and then that'll be my turn. Your turn. Each of you need water. Yeah. You can go get water. All right, I'm going to play Shadows. I'm going to play Bait and Switch. If your opponent has more Amber than you, steal one. Repeat this card effects if they still have more Amber. Mm -hmm. So I'll steal one. I have three of five. I'll steal one. We both have four. Uh, and then I will reap with Umbra. Actually, uh, Umbra is going to fight the Dew Fairy. So when I use this creature to fight, it is dealt no damage in return. But if you're fighting, it's elusive. Dew Fairy is elusive. Oh, so it is. So, she couldn't fight without so elusive is the first time a creature is attacked each turn, no damage is dealt. And that means no damage is dealt to both the attacker or the defender. Um, so actually, I'm going to use Umbra to fight Headhunter and do two damage. It doesn't get dealt damage in return, and then I steal one when I fight with Umbra. Uh, and then I'm going to play too much to protect, steal all but six of your opponent's Amber. You don't have six Amber, but I'm going to get the Amber from it, and then check. So that gets unexhausted. And I'll draw back up to six. Hey, Hero Logic. Uh, Hero Logic said Happy New Year. Yes, so it's been a while. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to make this more dogs allowed in here friendly.
which you interest me. You get out. Out of vision. Come on. Out of vision. Out. Is it this? Check. Okay. How many do you have? Six? Six. You couldn't have seven? Nope. You couldn't take one more? Nope. You only have three creatures? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and play Logos. Um, I'm gonna play Dexter, capture the fun. Um, I'll also play a Titan Mechanic, which would benefit you. Because Titan Mechanic makes keys cost one less. One on Flake. But I'm gonna make sure he's not on a Flake. Uh, so, doesn't benefit you anymore. Uh, and that's my turn. Alright, I will play Brubner. I will play Take That Smarty Pants. Steal two Amber if your opponent has three or more Logos cards in play. Oh, interesting. So that gets me an amber. Logo specific. Yep, and I steal two. Oh. So would you say you have seven now? Um... John Edwards says that uh, he wouldn't have predicted Keyforge would be a one tire game, but so it's like they have to not pigeonhole us as Euro gamers. Who wants to live in a hole for pigeons? Um, oh. We like playing games uh, like this together. We like playing card games. We played Destiny a lot when Destiny first came out with each other. We like to play it a lot. We played it with other people. Um, we played Netrunner quite a bit. Um, when we were dating. We like these sort of games that work well in a two-player environment. Uh, not always necessarily keen to play with other people. So, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna ready and fight with a friendly creature. Ancient, Ancient bear. bear is going to assault Dexter. <gasps> so bad. So, it'll do two, two damage to Dexter. Uh-huh, and then we'll take three and yeah. then do an additional five. So you get your stupid amber back. Yep. And Dexter's gone. But Dexter, when destroyed, goes on top of my deck. Yep. Uh, and then I am going to give Ancient Bear Yo Mama Mastery. Okay, then. Which gets me an amber. Mm-hmm. Creature gains taunt, and I fully heal Ancient Bear. Wow. Uh, all right. And then I'm done. And then you can now steal... Yep. Mm -hmm. Steal all the amber. I go for three. I'm gonna play a Brobnar. Oh, check by the way. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna play Brobnar, and I'm gonna play Burn the Stockpile. Uh, if your opponent has seven or more, they lose four. So it's just gone. I don't even get it. Yep. Uh, but you still have a nut. Still have six. Dang it. Um. I'm going to go ahead and play Warsong. For the remainder of the turn, I gain one Ember for each time a friendly creature fights. Nice. So Bumpsy is going to go ahead and... Actually, we'll do Headhunter is going to go ahead and fight Dusk. Ancient Bear has taught. Okay, fine. Ombra. Yep. You forced me to do it. Uh, so Headhunter is going to fight Ombra. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of these. And then I'm going to play Unguarded Camp. For each creature you have in excess of your opponent, a friendly creature captures one. Each creature cannot capture more than Ooh. one this way. So I have five. Steve has two. Um, so I get to steal three of his Amber. I'm going to put one on Titan Mechanic, one on Bumpsy, and one on... <sighs> Headhunter. Uh, and then I will go ahead, Headhunter 
already fought. Oh, Headhunter also when he fights gains gain ambush, so that's nice. Um, and then I'll go ahead and use Bumpsy for Dust Fairy. So Bumpsy Ancient will get. Bear has... Oh wait, we've already gone over this. We've already gone over this, Tiffany. <sighs> then I won't put that on Dust. Fairy. Put that there. And then I'll use Bumpsy to fight Ancient Bear. So Ancient Bear be dead. Uh, Bumpsy be dead, but I still get an Amber for Bumpsy fighting. Um, cool. And... Did I get the one Amber for playing in Guarded Camp? No. Not quite a check. But that was my turn. You are all like, I have ten Amber! There's nothing she can do to me! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, uh, 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 I'm gonna play Shadows. Put Dodger into play, put Silver Chief into play, Silver Chief enters play ready, Dodger is exhausted, Silver Chief is just going. Mm. They're doing a tabletop RPG for the Android universe. No one tell Steve. He loves that universe. I love that game. The original mm -hmm. Android, it was a it was a flood game. The one of my first big games like that. Um, I am. Oh yeah, that was another thing. Um, I enjoy. We enjoy Keyforge. I enjoy Keyforge because it's not all about fighting. Um, that was brought up. That's one of the reasons we like Netrunner. I like to play corpse in Netrunner. I don't like to be on the offensive. I like to lay traps for Steve. Um, and he likes to find the traps, so it works out. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play Regrowth. Um, so I get a creature from my discard pile back into my hand. Question is, which creature do I want? Bumpsy! <laughs> He's such a good boy. Um, can't play Bumpsy though. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and play Calicor. So each friendly creature on a flank gains skirmish. I'm also mm. going to play Way of the Wolf. Whoa. So uh, Dew Fairy now has skirmish, um, and has plus five. So that's I'm just making Dew Fairy hard. Oh. I reckon that I play this creature mm -hmm, first. Mm -hmm. Each time you play another creature, mm -hmm. I gain one amber. So when I play the Halicor, I would get. Um, and then Dew Fairy, who is a beautiful special beast with skirmish, uh, and is seven, will go ahead and attack Dodger. Bye, Dodger. Goodbye, Dew Fairy. Dewberry doesn't die. Oh, Dewberry has one damage. And Dewberry also has skirmish. Yeah. So. I found what this deck does, and mm -hmm. it's upgrade everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of these are there in here? How many of you are there? We should do some deck training. Um, we have two Mars decks. It took us 12 decks to get Brobnar. But we have a ton of logos and shadows. So, yeah.
Bra bears are like trolls in the art. It's very interesting. Alright, I'm going to sacrifice Nip- it's Omni, so I can sacrifice Nibenthe Seed, return a card from my discard to my hand. I'm playing Shadow, by the way. Um, I am going to return Bait and Switch to my hand, and then play Bait and Switch. If my opponent has more Amber than me, steal one, repeat it until... So I have four, you have seven. Mm -hmm. I have five, you have six. I have six, you have five. Yeah. Um. Then I'm going to play Miasma. You skip before the key step on your next turn, which doesn't super matter, but it gives me your turn. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and play um I'll play Brobnar. It's Bumpsy! He was never. <laughs> Bumpsy's back. Got tell a friend. Wait, um and then I'm gonna play Anger! Ready and fight with a friendly creature. Uh I'm gonna ready and fight With Dew Fairy, because Dew Fairy is the best. Um, and Dew Fairy will take out Silver too. Um, and then, because I played Brown Mare, that's still technically tapped. So Dew Fairy has been used. I'm going to go ahead and use Headhunter to. Oh, Headhunter, I don't want you to die. So I'm going to Reap with Headhunter, um, which is such not a Brown Mare thing, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, and then that's my turn. Check. Okay. Beginning of my turn, I forge a key. Good job! I did it. I thought you had more than six. Did you just say I six? had seven, and then you bumped oh, me. Oh, I bumped seed! All right, well, let's say it's a full moon. For the remainder of the turn, game one each time I play a creature. I'm going to play Hunting Witch, which gets me an amber each time I play another creature. Oh, I one. forgot about the one I would have gotten for playing Bumsy. Because hmm? I have a Hunting Witch as well. So. Uh, and then I'm going to play Snuffle Gator. Snuffle Gator! <laughs> Snuffle Gator. Is the best. So I gain one from Hunting Witch. They had a Witch lot of fun with the names. And one from Full Moon. Um, and Dust Pixie is going to reap. Uh, if there's one thing I forget to do in this game, it's to reap when I activate the house. Um, okay. I forge. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and play Untamed. Yeah, I'll play it in uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Lupo the Scarred. Um, when I play him, I deal two to a creature. Sorry, Hunting Witch. Yeah. You're too good. Um, hunting Witch needs to be next to the same. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a Regrowth. Ah, another one to get another creature from my discard pile back. So is this currently the plan? Yes. Perhaps. Um, you can get you. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and reap. Oh, when I played Lupo, I would have gotten an Amber for playing Lupo because of Hunter Witch. Hunting Witch. Um, and then I'm playing Untamed, so I'm reaping with Helicor. And I'm going to go ahead and reap with Dewberry, and Dewberry gets two when I reap, so it's a total of three more. So. Oh, and I can reap with Hunter Witch. Which, yeah, so check. Okay. Uh, and then I draw one. Alright, I'm going to play Brother. Yes, you are. I'm going to play Warsong. For the remainder of the turn, gain one Amber each time a friendly creature fights. Yep. Um. I love Snuffle Gator. The art on Snuffle Gator, 
I turn off auto figures, but it, you could. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. He's a good snuffle gator. So I'm gonna play Ganger Chieftain next Love to Ganger Snuffle Chieftain. Gator. I may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Uh, Snuffle Gator. Why are you doing this, Snuffles? Did you deal two damage when you played with him? Yes, I took care oh, of okay. Hunting Witch. Um. So Snuffle Gator is going to attack Halakor. And Snuffle Gator has Skirmish. Okay. So Halakor dies. I get an Amber. Uh. Five. Um, then I'm going to activate a gauntlet of command, ready and fight with the friendly creature. Is it going to be Snuffle Gator? It's going to be Snuffle Gator. Snuffle Gator! Snuffle Gator is going to attack Titan Mechanic. Aww. So Titan Mechanic takes four. Takes four. Snuffle Gator is exhausted. I'm going to use my second gauntlet of command to ready and fight. <gasps> oh, wait, then did I get. So is my second also, Amber from Also, Ganger Chieftain is yes. still exhausted. Yeah. Um, so it's the second Amber. I'm going to fight with Snuffle Gator again. Snuffle Gator! Snuffle Gator is going to attack. It just has to be... has to be a Hunting Witch. Okay. So it was the third time I fought? Yep. I don't know why I tapped him, but yeah. Uh, then I'm going to play another Gauntlet of Command. Which is exhausted. Is exhausted. Um, Snuffle Gator is totally a Pokemon name. That's true. Then I'm going to do a Tremor, stun a creature in each of his neighbors. I'm going to stun Headhunter, Deep Fairy, and Titan Mechanic. Okay. Mm, yeah. One of from every faction. How much damage? Titan Mechanic needs two more. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to play Relentless Assault. Ready and fight with up to three different friendly creatures, one at a time. So all three? Oh, which you still have that card. Which card? Where when you fight with stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? So I did, I fought, uh... Well, but it still counts. Yes. So... But Snuffle Gator can't be activated six times. It's the rule. You can't do infinite combos in this game. You can activate maximum six times. Okay, so Snuffle Gator has already activated three times? Yeah, so yeah, Snuffle Gator's done. Okay, so I'm going to ready... Technically, it's ready and fight one at a time. So I'm going to do Snuffle Gator first. Uh, Snuffle Gator is going to attack Dew Fairy... Snuffles. Snuffle Gator. Sure, you want to start with Snuffle Gator? I think, okay. Dust Pixie is going to attack Headhunter. Yeah. Dust Pixie dies. And I get another Amber. Okay. And then Snuffle Gator is going to fight, which gets me an Amber. Actually, does the. Do you get the Amber? Yeah, each time it fights. So Snuffle Gator is going to attack. Probably just Titan Mechanic. Okay. So Titan Mechanic's done. And I get... You already got it. I got the Amber for yes, this Yes, you already got the one for Snuffle Gator. You got it before you fell. And then Ganger Chieftain. Oh, so... Okay, yeah. And then Ganger Chieftain. Ganger Chieftain is going to attack. Good night, Madbona. We'll see you next Tuesday!
For Expansuary. Don't know what we're playing yet, but Expansuary. Yeah, I'll do five damage to Dew Fairy. Five damage to Dew Fairy. We're good. Oh, Ganger Chieftain's gone. Yep. Yep. Uh, so check. Yep. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I forge. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play mm, Logos. So I'm gonna play Mother. During my draw card step, I refill my hand to one additional card. That's pretty nice. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and play Dexter. When Dexter comes into play, I capture one. Mm -hmm. This is Dexter. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and play uh, nothing else. I'm going to reap with Doc Bookton, which lets me reap. And when I reap, I draw a card. So I draw a card. Um, ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, are we done? So, I draw a card. Okay, my turn. Yes. I play Shadow. Ooh, Poison Stas Wave! I get, oh, sorry, first thing that happens <gasps> is I forge a second key. Uh, so, I play Poison Night Wave, chop. deal two damage to each creature, which uh, includes Snuffle Gator. So, ah, Dexter, and then Lupo, and then Bumsy! And then Dew Fairy's gone, which is probably helpful because I need that. Yeah. Um, I need those those damage counters. Uh, and then two two to duck, two two mother. Also, I should have drawn one more card. All right, and then I am going to play Nexus, who is elusive and exhaustive. Dodger, who. Uh, Steals one of the fights, and Silvertooth, who enters play ready, uh, and Silvertooth will attack. Uh, no, Silvertooth is just going to... Okay. And check. check. I should have done something different on my last turn, but it's too late. It's too late. No, there's nothing I can do. It's too late. Damn. I have a card I didn't know I have because I didn't look at the deck list that much. It's a really good card, and it would have won me the game. But even though I drew it, I didn't, and I had time to compensate, I didn't do it. Um, how many you have? You have eight. Yeah. All right, Brabner. Here we go. Uh, Does it even work that way? Yes. It would. Okay, Bumpsy is going to attack. Uh, and... Oh, wait, no. Nope! Nope, that's not what that does. Never mind. Take it all back. I'm hosed. I'll play Logos. Uh, I'm gonna put Dr. Escotera into play. I gain one for each Forge key your opponent has, so I gain yes. two. And then I'll play Dr. Escotera, and so I gain another two. Um, so I got seven. Um, and then I will reap with Doc Bookson and hope I get a card I can use. <gasps> Probably not, but I'm going to do Bouncing Death Cork. <gasps> no! 
<laughs> Destroy an enemy creature and a friendly creature. Snufflegator! I can repeat this effect as many times as I like, as long as it's possible to re- repeat the entire effect. There's literally no reason to do this except for to just murder everything. So I'm going to go ahead and kill Bumpsy and Silvertooth, and then Dodger and Lumpo the Scarred, and then I'll kill Doc Bookton and Nexus, and then I'll go ahead and take out Mother and Snufflegator. So you have nothing. I almost have nothing. (laughs) Some people just want to watch the world burn. Look, I'm going to lose. We're going to... Oh, that's not a creature. Um, you know what the really, really annoying thing is? What? I have a card that would let me forge a key, but it's the wrong house. Yeah. So I could have won if I had done one thing different last turn, which is if I had played these fools last time because I had them, mm-hmm. I could have won this oh, turn. Oh, because that's four amber. Yep. Well, no, it would have been, you only would have had one key, so it would have been two amber, so it would have been at five, but I could have gotten one mm-hmm. more amber, mm-hmm. and then maybe one other amber, maybe, probably not, so it was probably not going to work either way. Um, on that delightful note, uh, I think they're all, I could reap, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, you can, you can reap that, with Dexter, it's fine. That's my turn. Sure you, sure, you don't want to reap with Dexter. No, nope, I'm done. He's so sad. Look at he look is at really sad because his head is on a shoulder. It's, it won't Just, focus. It I won't, turned off. I, uh, I turned off. But look how focus. sad Dexter is. All right, okay. uh, for Jaki. And he wins. I, wins. I was actually kind of excited about my next turn. What else is there? Because I had another War Song gain one each time a friendly creature fights. I had three gauntlets of command. Well, I had Headhunter, but... I like this deck. Headhunter, you gain one every time he fights, so you could gain six. Yeah. From yeah. Free Gauntlet of Commands, Warsong, and Headhunter. He would have died because he didn't have Skirmish. But... Yeah. Well, and so this deck has a ton of upgrades. Like, no artifacts. But I have, like, three upgrades or something like that. It's pretty good. I have an upgrade for every faction, I think. Robnar was definitely a support class in this one, yeah. which was interesting. Um, if I had known that that card was in there, that let me forge Key of yeah. Change. You would have tried to cycle to get it. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was interesting. I like this deck. I'd like to play again. Um, how about you? Uh, I like this. I mean, it has Yo Mama Mastery, and it has Take That Smarty Pants, which specifically calls out, calls logos. out logos, and I yeah. don't like logos. Um, I have two nocturnal maneuvers in here, so that's pretty fun. Um, smash! Oh, and I, what was Master, I had something called Master Plan. What did Master Plan do? It's not bad. This one's not bad. Put a card from your hand face down beneath Master Plan. Omni, play the card beneath Master Plan and sacrifice it. Wow. That's pretty so, good. That's pretty good. Um, so yeah, so that's Keyforge, game number two. Um, shall we do a game number three? We shall, and I shall play the Four Horsemen deck in the game number three. Uh, which deck do you wish to play? Um, I think I want to play the, uh, Plunderburster. <laughs> Plunderburster? Is that your tournament one? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. I'm going to tweet that I'm playing with a four horseman deck because views, yo. Um, I have a log that this deck lost. Are you Muckraker? Yeah, you're a Muckraker. Muck Raker, Raker of Muck. Morning. Alright. Um, okay, so this deck oh. is my four horseman deck. Riston O Confuchum the Sixth is a Logos Untamed Sanctum with the Four Horsemen in it. Alright. I haven't played it uh, in a while, so... So I won with, I guess, the only deck that I have. Okay. Not... 
Alright, so I haven't played this deck in a while, but we're going to go ahead and take a sexy picture of the four horsemen and tweet about it. I feel like I don't want to start... Well, should I do the win-loss... I guess I can do the win-loss tracking from... The tournament? Yeah. I did. Alright, Riston. Okay. Gonna tweet. This is the part of the stream where you just watch us on our phones. Yeah. I need to like re look through this deck and remember what it does. Aside from the horseman shenanigans. Bless you, Papa. Um. I mean, I know what my deck does. It has a card called Anger and a card called Punch. What's your factions? Robnar Logo Sanctum. Type in URLs. Okay. Oh no, I left Voltamash the Madman Pillars calling card out. What is Voltamash? Who's Voltamash? Um, when we went for the holidays, we actually didn't really take any games with us on our vacations. We just took our Keyforge decks um, because we have enough of them. That it's like a variety of play. And it's a simple enough game for us to just play and we have enough decks so it's like unique and different enough every time we play. But just riffle shuffling and deck worth money. From fifteen to two hundred dollars, depending on time. Uh time maybe you know, six hundred, whatever. Yeah, look through this really quick. I mean, if you can't sell something on the internet, which will eventually give the person, eventually may give the person who bought it buyer's remorse months later, what's the point? That's one of the things I, one of the reasons I've never really liked the idea of selling stuff in a timely manner. And again, it's let the buyer beware, but I always feel like I'm taking advantage of someone who may be irrationally exuberant about a thing. I don't know. Like, if they're willing to pay two hundred dollars because something is new, but wouldn't do it in six months, I don't know. So it somewhat feels like I'm taking advantage, but you know, by the way, it's not. Like okay. Now that I know these cards better, like, maybe this deck isn't that bad. We'll see. Oh, right, because you played one of your earlier games with that deck. I did. So I didn't know strategy. I mean, I still don't know strategy. And I didn't know what was in it. It was interesting. That tournament we played where we played four games with the same deck was the most we've ever played with a single deck. Because we have so many decks, we, like, swap a lot. So... But it's interesting because there are definite differences between the factions, and so we both have strong opinions about the factions. Um, like, you know... Steve's hate for logos. It's... Any combination of the two of logos, shadow, and dis that I don't like. With, with some amount of untamed. Not sure I wanted that, but that's fine. I go first. One, two, so I will draw seven three, cards. Four, five, and then I will go ahead 
And we actually haven't introduced chains yet in we any have of these it. games. And my deck has chain stuff in it, and I think yours probably does. Mine does as well, yes. So I will put my chain card. Cool. I'm all living in. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good. You see stuff look in your paws, baby. Is the emperor that bursts through plunder, is that just Scrooge McDuck? No, he's not an emperor. He's just a duck. Who's rich. Mm -hmm. And voiced by David Tennant. What? David Tennant voiced him in the new remake of Oh, Duck okay. It's my turn. Can I start? Woo! We haven't done it. I don't have any water. All I have is a bottle of wine. It's just gonna get sticky. <laughs> nice, nice one, Jesus. This is what happens when you let your powers go unchecked. Let's let's not be. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am playing a deck of the four horsemen of de uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but still try I to not be super uh, sacrilegious. Yeah, offensive is That's the word right. I go for. Okay. We don't hide the fact that we are uh, religiously agnostic. Is that a... Something like that. No. But we don't need to make fun of other religions. I will uh... stop digging myself a hole. You're fine. I do appreciate... Or, well, I'll stop it. <laughs> like, what else were you going to dig? Alright. Be ready? Yeah. Okay. Logos. Library of Babel. It's my turn. Uh, Logos. Two bat drives. Yep. Alright. Uh, untamed. I'm gonna do Hunting Witch. Each time I play another creature, gain one. And the Witch of the Eye. So I get one. Um, oh, sorry. Control Z! Control Z! Everybody, Control Z! Control Z! Full Moon! Then Hunting Witch. And then Witch of the Eye. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's the combo I wanted. Massive cheating all bound! Alright. Your turn. Alright, I'm gonna play, uh, there. Um, I'm gonna play Logos again. Twin Bolt Emission, which gets me a number. Uh, deal two to a creature and two to a different creature. So hunting, which goes in the witch of the eye, that's two damage. Uh, and then that was dumb of me. <laughs> I should have fought with them, but it's fine. Uh, one of them will attack Witch of the Eye, and I will steal one Amber. Uh, one of them it dies. It has Bat Drum Uh, and then this one will just reap, but I should have done that instead of Twin Bolt Mission. And then I will draw them. Okay. I'll go ahead and do Sanctum, and here we start. Horseman of the pe Pestilence. Deal one to each non-horseman creature. That friends take one each. Um, I'm going to put the Potion of Invulnerability into play. And then I'll go ahead and put Champion Tabris and Francis into play. Uh, and then they all go back to play. Yeah, that's all. All right, well, I, I'm going to do Sanctum. Okay. So let's do the Spirit's Way. Destroy each creature with power three or higher. 
That's the perfect death. That's the perfect card against that. Yep. Oh. Uh, and then we're going to put Commander Remiel into play. He's a jerk. He's exhausted. Yeah. He's actually really nice. He's pretty fantastic. Uh, so he's going to exhaust and I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to do Logos. Uh, for the remainder of the turn, each time I play another card, I draw a card. Which is like, mwah, to me. Just mwah, library access. Um, I'm going to play Foggify. So you cannot use creatures to fight on your next turn. Which, okay. I'm mostly just playing for the Amber. Um, then I'll go ahead and play Phase Shift. So I can play one non-Logos card. Oh, mm. sorry. Sorry, hang on. Well, well, when well. I played Foggify, I should have drawn the card. There we go. Um, now I will face shift, which is I drew, played a card so I can just draw another card. Wow. Okay. That's a fun combo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a non-Logos card, and I will go ahead and play... Save the pack. Destroy each damaged creature. Gain one chain. So I've gained a chain, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but I played a card, so I get to draw a card. Ooh. Um, so those two are going to go away. I'm going to use the action of Library Babel to draw another card. So six is so good. Does not help me. Uh, and that is my turn. I actually don't get to draw because I drew so much during the thing I don't get to draw up, which kind of stinks, but it's okay. And now I'm going to talk about chain, is chaining. So if, at the end of my turn, when I draw back up to my hand limit, which is six, if I have a chain, my hand limit actually decreases by the amount of chains that I have. So for every six chains you have, you lose a card in your hand, um, any number up to six. So from minus one from one to six chains you lose one card slot in your hand so my hand limit is technically five right now but i drew cards and you don't have to discard down so it's fine if at the end of my turn when i go to draw more cards if i hit that hand limit that is uh put upon me by the chains i lose a chain um, and so I would bump my chain counter down, and once you no longer have any chains, your hand limit is restored to six. Yeah, it's any time you would draw a card but are prevented by the chains. Yes. Every time that fires. So in this case, because I'm actually over my hand limit already because of my library and babble and face shift and whatnot, I actually don't get to draw anything, so I don't get to lose a chain. Which kind of stinks for me, but it's fun. Yeah. And now it's Steve's turn. Uh, I'm going to play Sanctum. Bulwark. Each of Bulwark's neighbors gets two armor. And then I'm going to play Turns of Redress. Choose a friendly creature to capture two. So Commander Remiel will capture two. Okay. And I get an amber. Uh, do you want to use that for your armor? Oh, no, neighbors. And I will draw two. Okay. Huh. Not a great hand right now. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and play Untamed. I'm gonna play Snuffle Gator! Oh no! He's back! Uh, and I'm gonna play, sorry, before I play Snapple Gator, I'm gonna play Lost in the Woods, which doesn't do anything but give me Amber, because it says choose two friendly creatures and two enemy creatures, shuffle each chosen creature into its owner's deck. So technically I do as much of this as I can, so I think I still choose those two, and they go bye-bye. So you do as much of the card as you can, so those two are shuffled into his deck, uh, and then I play Snuffle Gator. Uh, Red coming, the best kind of con. Um, and then I'll discard this card because I don't want it in my hand anymore. So that's the end of my turn. 
I will draw up to my hand limit, which is currently five, and I'm prevented from drawing the six card because of my chain, so my chain, my one chain that I had is gone, so I no longer have chains on me, so on my next turn, when I would draw back up, I can draw it to six now. Bless you, Richard. I burned myself. Oh yeah, that's blistering bad now. Alright, to your worst. I burned myself uh, before the stream getting dinner out. And it was like a really bad burn, just on this one spot. And it was doing great. I don't great. remember making. I don't remember that burn. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. It, like, blistered immediately, and then I cooled it down into the... It, like, cooled down into the skin punch. It was weird, but now it's blistered up again. Was it because I played Yo Mama Mastery? That's how bad the burn was. That's it's, how bad. That is master tier. It's just starting to ache again because it's blistering. All right, let's play Logos. Uh, Scrambler Storm, you cannot play action cards on your next turn, which is you and Amber. What's the point? Uh, and then I will play Dexter. Cards. Dexter is going to capture and I will draw two cards. Um, okay. Oh. I can't do actions, so that's kind of worthless. So I'm going to go ahead and do Sanctum. Uh, Staunch Knight gets plus two power when on a flank. So Staunch Knight is at plus two power. Um, um, then I'll go ahead and put in Sequins. Sequins? I don't know. And then I'll put on the Horseman of War. Uh, for the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature can be used as if they were in an in the active house, but can only fight. That's cool. Snuffle Gator uh, is gonna fight Dexter and has skirmish, so well that worked out. Um. Yeah. And that was my turn. So I no longer have the chains on me, so I can draw back up to six. All right, I'm going to play Brubber. Mm -hmm. Let's do Sound the Horns, which gets me an Amber. I discard cards from the top of my deck until I either discard a Brodmere creature or run out of cards. So I just act wheel, skip the time hog, or go Goja, Ingo, Champion, and Act Wheel. Bumpsy! Bumpsy's back! Okay. Uh, Alright, so let's put Bumpsy into play. Er, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, we'll play Coward's End. Destroy each undamaged creature. Gain three chains. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Okay, now we put Bumpsy into play. You lose one Amber. Oh no, you lose. I don't have to. You put two. I did lose it. It just went someplace. I have no idea where. It's just yeah. gone. Uh, and then we'll put uh, Earthshaker into play. Destroy each creature with power three or lower. Um, and then I'll just I'll play Punch to get the Amber and deal three damage to a creature, which I can't do. So one. And check. Two check. Yeah. Three. Because I have a chain. I got lost on my deck. Uh, Logos, I guess. I will drill a card. Hey, it's the Spangler Box. Spangler Box is stupid, um, but I've got one. We have so many decks with Spangler Box. Spangler Box, uh, you activate it and you purge a creature in play, which means the, the creature is removed from the game. 
Uh, but if you do that, your opponent gains Spangler Box, uh, and so then they can use Spangler Box on their turn to purge another card. Um, but if someone manages to get Spangler Box discarded, all cards that were purged by Spangler Box come back. So it's it's weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play random access, which gets me a thing, and it archives the top mm. card of my deck. Not what I really wanted, but that's fine. Um, and then I'll go ahead and play phase shift, so I can play one non-logos card. Do I actually want to do that? I don't actually want to play that. Instead, I want to discard it. I'm going to discard that. Alright. So it's my turn. I draw back to my hand, which is six. Um, And then it's Steve's turn. Okay. Let's turn my turn for you. Keep. Spangler Box is totally a Ghostbusters trap. It even looks like a Ghostbusters trap. It's like cracked and... Yeah. Uh, let's just... Stoop Robnar, put the Mighty Javelin into play. She gets me an Amber. I can sacrifice it as an Omni to deal 4 damage to a creature. Uh, and then Bobsy and Earthshaker will both reap. Yeah. And then I will draw one card and then decrease the chain. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Sanctum. Horseman of Death. Return each non... Which return each horseman creature from your discard pile to wow. your hand. Wow. So, Horseman of War goes back into my hand and the Horseman of Pestilence. Fourth Horseman has not shown his head yet. Um... So now, this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, just go with me here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play the Horseman of Pestilence to deal one damage to each non-horseman creature. But go with me. Go with me here. Um, I'm also going to play... Cleansing wave! I heal one damage from each creature, gain one amber for each creature. Wow. Heal this way. Yeah. We're 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 a nice people, something so. Um that would be amazing if we all had creatures, uh -huh. but yeah, uh -huh. that didn't really happen. Um Yeah. Sort of not great. Uh, like, the four horsemen can just be taken out by these two, which kind of stinks. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm done. Oh! I, I, I draw a card. And it's Steve's turn. Also, check. Um, let's do this. Let's do Brobnar again. Uh, these two will both reap. So I'm at six. And I will do Tremor, stun a creature in each of its neighbors. Um, and then they will both be petty. I will lose my last chain, drawing back up to five. So, next turn I will draw back to six. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do Untamed. I'll do Full Moon. Uh, and then I'll play Flexia, which gets me an Amber. Uh, oh, oh, also I would have forged. Yeah. Okay. Um, gain two if I control more 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 creatures than my opponent, which I do. So I gain two more. Um, did I gain the one? I did not. Okay. Um, 
help. Doesn't help. Doesn't help, doesn't help, doesn't help. Um Okay. That I will discard yeah. Hold on to those. Yeah. Uh, start my turn for a key. Two keys, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. I would like two keys, you. Each you lay down. I knew what you were trying to do. Just lay down. Alright, I'm just going to do Sanctum. Staunch Knight into play Exhausted. Commander Renewal into play Exhausted. Uh, they both on Exhaust. And I now draw back up to 6. Um... I'm sorry, this is awkward. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna do logos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna draw a card. Not what I wanted, but interesting combos. Very interesting. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and. I'm gonna Spangler Box Earthshaker. So you go to Spangler Box. For a faction you don't have. Oh no, you do have logos. Well, I hope it's worth it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and play Phase Shift to play a non-logos card, and I will play the Horseman of Famine. Destroy the least powerful creature. So Commander Rimmel is gone. Do you want water or chicken? <laughs> um, and uh, that's my turn. Okay, uh, I am going to play Logos. I'll put Nobu Archaeologist into play. As an action, I can archive a card from my discard pile. I'm going to play Library Access for the remainder of the turn. Each time I play another card, draw a card. Let's draw her Library Access first. Yes. Mm -hmm. So draw a card. Uh, and then I will play Wild Wormhole, which gets me an amber. Play the top card of my deck. I will play Gatekeeper. Uh, and then that lets me draw a card. If your opponent has seven or more amber, capture all the five of it. I don't think, goodness. You don't. I don't. Um, and then my. Let's see. I will Spangler Box Horseman of Famine. Okay. And then I will draw back to six. I'll do Sanctum. Um. Commander Rimmel. Uh. uh Horseman of Death. Person of War? Horseman of War, sorry. Um, for the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature can be used as if it were in the active house, but can only fight. Doesn't super help me. Um, but Flaxia is going to go ahead and take out Nouveau Archaeologist. Mm -hmm. um, tit for tat. Because why not? Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and activate these two so that their stuns come off. 
that. Let's use this. Um. Ooh, actually. Before I attack, I'm going to discard Potion of Invulnerability so that she doesn't take any damage. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and then I will discard that. And then that was my turn. So I draw three. And your turn. I got no amber from that. Oh. Alright, let's do Sanctum. In terms of redress, choose a friendly creature to capture two. Staunch Knight, oh, Staunch Knight has an extra two power because he's currently on a thing. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to play Protectrix. Uh, actually, no, sorry. Play Bulwark and then Protectrix. Uh, Bulwark looks like Edgar. So we each have plus two armor. Oh, hello! Um, uh, and then uh, Staunch Knight and Group Keeper will both be And my turn is ended, and I draw back two sets. Um, I'll go ahead and do Sanctum, so why not, and I will Reap, which deals one damage to each non-horseman creature. So, Commander Rimmel, blocks you. But armor blocks it, right? Yes. So it only bumps you to its damage. Yeah. Uh, but they have, they each have one armor down. Alright, then I'll go ahead and re- oh, sorry. So that was a reef. And then I'll reef with Horseman of Death. And then I will reef with this one, which lets me use a friendly non-sanctum creature. Um, so it's reefing with Commander Rimmel, and then reefing with Flaxia, and then I'll reef with the Horseman of War. Not what he really wanted to do today when he came in, but it's fine. Uh, and that was my turn. I haven't drawn anything, because all I did was my turn? Yes. Sanctum. I will play Shield of Justice, which gets me an amber. The remainder of the turn, each, oh, check. Sorry. each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage. Um, so, um, Staunch Knight is that six power. Staunch Knight will um, take out Horseman of Pestilence. Uh, oh, it doesn't get all damage. Okay. Um, Gatekeeper will attack Horseman of Death. Okay. Um, Bulwark will attack Commander Remuel. Okay. Uh, and then Protectrix will attack the Horseman of War. Okay. Um, and that's it. Actually, Mighty Javelin will deal four damage to Fox. How much deal? How much? Four. 
and then I will draw my card. So my turn, I forge a key. Mm -hmm. Two keys. Uh, Logos. Um, I'll go ahead and play Mother. Uh, I'll play another library. Oh, first, I will play a library of Bobble. Sorry. Actually, I'm going to put this card up too. First, we'll play a library of Bobble, which lets me draw a card. I currently have no deck. So. Uh, oh, hey, Luke. Uh, Keyforge is. It's a little bit late. No, it's not a Netrunner or a Magic the Gathering Killer. Not at all. Um, but it plays a little bit like Magic the Gathering. A little bit. It's by the same primary designer. Um, well, the original. Uh, but Netrunner is very different because it was asymmetrical player powers. Um, so yeah. Card. Not what I wanted. Uh, then I will, I... In terms of it being a magic killer... We I never liked magic. I don't think killer is the right term, but in terms of being able, easier to teach, Keyforge seems like it's probably easier to teach because each turn... The number of rules you need to know to do each turn is simplified. Uh, it's basically... You don't have all the different steps and things that magic does, so I think at the very least it's probably a little easier to teach. Stanchion. Spangler box. Um I'm just I'm gonna do uh Sanctum and uh Reap three times. This one if I reap I may fully heal a creature and then kill Bumpsy. Bumpsy can't be built in for the end of the turn, it doesn't super matter. But uh, I will reap first and draw it. Okay. So check. Check. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play Untame. Uh, Ritual of Balance. If my opponent has six or more, I may steal one. So I steal one. I cannot do this. I cannot pull this out. Um, which? Oh. Hunting Witch. Each time I play another creature, I gain one. I have no more creatures. Doesn't help. Doesn't help. Does not help. All right. Oh, here, logic asks, how are the dogs? They've been Ichi this week. <laughs> uh, the dogs are good. Uh, Ichi's currently sideways on the couch. Cena wants. We've gated off the kitchen because we carved chicken for dinner and we didn't put the carcass away because we had to stream. So, and Cena surfs counters. So. <laughs> And she hasn't gotten any major scores yet, so... Yeah, but she's... She knows... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Best to remove temptation. So, she's surfing to try and get in there right now, but... She would also like us to give them shoes. I think she just wants mother <sighs> Um... That wouldn't have helped. Wow. I think some of the card in classic card game style, the cards have some of the cards have flavor text. Bumpsy's is whatever he doesn't like, he breaks. He doesn't like anything. True Bumpsy. Yeah. Love Bumpsy. Um, I could have if things worked out won this turn, but things didn't work out, so I don't win. 
So that's the end of my turn. So Steve wins. And on my turn, I forge a... That's the card I would have needed to win! Was it the next, very next card? Yeah. What was it? Forge a key? Full moon. I had forge a key. What was... I needed full moon to get one more amber off of that. And then you needed to have damage, but you healed it. But how would I, you how would you have forged a key? Or... Oh, I have... I had a uh, key charge. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. And that's it. Steve wins. So, yeah. Another close one. And then now, Spangler Box, we just flip it over. Yeah. And we say whose cards are whose. So. I like that. It's the simple things that the I'm last, my husband. The last card was a doctor. Um, Hanging out in his laboratory. So there we go. It's a good game. <sighs> I like that the three crystal keys match the three factions on this card. There's the red, the blue, and the gold. Okay. Um, questions! Kabuki Kid, you do have to download the rules still, yes. Um, Thank you, Kabuki. What is your f Luke asks, what are our favorite houses so far? Um, I really like low rolls because it's the card manipulation one. It's the one that lets you like store cards for later or draw a lot of cards. But I actually I have a lot of logo stacks. This is one of the ones that like is the most card hand manipulative. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of options. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I can't get this deck to work for me. I get close, but I want to play it a few more times. I haven't played very much Dis. Um. I haven't also played a lot of Mars, but I'm starting to figure them out. I think two of my favorites are Sanctum and Brumark because I like high power creatures that do things. He likes hitting me. I like I like hitting. I like. Uh, he likes hitting people. I should say. Yeah. Mm, well. Uh, but yeah, I like having I guess board control. Um, the two times I won with this deck, it was having a lot of creatures and just reaping, and then playing those cards which wipe creatures off the table. I think this deck has five destroy all creature cards. Yeah, that's a wiper deck. My deck does a lot of... So the four horsemen deck that I have is all about dealing damage and then healing it for your benefit. So you heal damage off of anyone and everyone yeah. to gain a bunch of amber and then you can forge um, not on your turn to like take advantage of that. But that didn't really work out for me. And I, I have trouble whenever Tiffany plays... So. decks which are like steel amber or like do crazy things like the dis dis and shadows and to some degree untamed uh, are all about amber manipulation so yeah so i like i like logos shadow and untamed actually one of the first decks i opened is my favorite it's it's uh, X Sword Shoe the Dubious and Abandon and it's a Shadow Logos Untamed but the reason I really like it is because it has two Nipple Apes and a Nipple Queen which is like an amazing combo um, this deck is currently undefeated X Sword Shoe the Dubious and Abandon plus the name is really good um, so that is that we had another question um, how religious were you about avoiding being online in December? We were very good about it. Um, we made exceptions for basically looking stuff up. Yes. Like recipes. Where, where do we ask directions, reviews? Like we were basically trying not to consume internet, but we still used it as a resource for some things. Like yeah. for real life related stuff. Well, and it was also like you can't click links to articles or things like that. And that was the biggest one is like very conscientious internet use was what we did. So there wasn't like, oh, those are all yours. Um, it wasn't like, oh, I'm looking at this recipe. Oh, that's an interesting headline. I'll click on it. Um, which we don't typically do anyway. We're not big link clickers outside of trusted trusted websites. But if it's a trusted website, both of us are just like, click, 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 click. Tell me more about this fascinating thing, which right. uh, we just didn't let ourselves do in December. Um, so we basically weren't, like, getting into the phone time suck. Yeah. I caught myself doing time. it twice, but that was it. Um, and I only went one article in. Um, and one of them was, like, the... 20 something good things that happened in 2018 I thought that was pretty good but otherwise we were very good I only went on Twitter during key periods we had some exceptions for Twitter um, 
We announced and launched a conference or convention, Sumptown Game Summit, which will be in Portland, May 18th. It's a one-day summit event for right now. We're going to make it a larger event. But I went on Twitter for the ticket sales launch. Um, and, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Xena just walked up to Ishii and is like, why can I tell? Word. Word dog is word. Um, no, it's not, it's not how you do it. It's not how you do it. How does how do I have the same number? Do I have one more deck for no, you? No, we have the same number. Uh, you just have to Yeah. I solved the problem. Um There were some good things in 2018. There was actually really good. It's a really good article. It helped a lot. Um and that was one of the things that we my haircut looks a lot better when I don't have glasses on, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why. But um that was one of the things that uh we both noticed in our month of no internet. So Steve and I gave up the internet for the month of December and partially into January. Um, and we went on vacation and we like really did no internet. And one of the things that we both found was we were both just like less depressed and hopeless about the state of the world and humanity as a whole. Um, because people are naturally... Uh, people are naturally rubberneckers. Like we like to watch train wrecks. As yeah. people, as a society, as like a humanity, we like to watch disasters, and they're more sensationalized for us as a species than good news. Like nobody googles like best twenty things that happen, or like nobody googles like what was the amazing parade or, like, charity event that won, like, millions of dollars? People instead Google, like, what is this earthquake that happened? Yeah. Which... The proximity to something potentially bad happening, things... Anything discussing it tends to be more sensational. So, like, if you're getting the real-time feed from Twitter, people are often like, this could be the worst thing ever. And yeah. And if it shakes down in a, a week later, maybe it's Nobody not the worst thing. It. Maybe it's not the worst thing ever, or maybe it is. But if you're only getting those, oh god, this could be horrible anxiety things, yeah, you're getting a lot of it. And so there's a great example that happened today, and you probably don't know about it. But one of the things that happened yesterday or today, I don't really know, is some sports team won some national event here in the U.S. And Trump invited them to the White House, or they come to the White House, and, and normally they get fed. And there's, like, no staff at the White House because Trump hasn't, like, funded any of that. So Trump paid out of his pocket, I don't know how this is, for them to be catered. And all he did was go to Burger He, like, ordered a ton of food from Burger King because it never goes bad and he didn't have to cook it because they don't, they're not employing any kitchens or staffs because it's in a shutdown right now. So there's, like, this whole news story arc about how, the, like, the White House beautiful banquet silverware is, like, covered in Burger King fast food that had been delivered hours prior. So Twitter is just, like, all ablaze with memes of, like, Trump being replaced with cartoon characters, meme characters, all this other stuff. People raging about how fast food is so disgusting when it's cooled down. People raging about what? how... But it is, though. Well, well yes, but it like, is, but, yeah. People raging about how, like, they fed these teenager national athletes these, like, super unhealthy foods that was, like, full of chemicals and not, like, pros like things that aren't really even technically food and, like, all this other stuff. So people are just, like, ripping a new one to the situation, and it's adding a lot of, like, drama and stress and hate and, like, just, like, my shoulder, I'm just, like, so angry about this. But, like, if I hadn't gone on Twitter today or last night, I wouldn't know about it, and I wouldn't matter, and, it, and, and I, I wouldn't be upset about it. And the better part of, the better part of that entire story is it, like, literally doesn't matter. Like, it, like, it doesn't matter. Like, that entire episode of Trump doing that w could have been a one sentence summary of one stupid thing that he did in his presidency that I could have read about anywhere. But because I went on Twitter and people like just blew it up into this thing, it just like keeps coming in my head and keeps making me angry and frustrated instead of being this like one sentence thing that I read about once in a summary about like what happened for the week, which wouldn't have been like a like a overblown thing of stupidity from people's opinions and that is what i have decided i hate the most about social media 
is like that is the best example of what I did not miss and do not want to engage in and do not want consuming my life with social media is people's aggressively angry retellings of stories, re-joking of stories, sensationalized anger about stupid nonsensical things like just things that just like continually blow up and like i get it if it was like something really bad like really awful like some warlord in some country ordered a bunch of people to be killed like i that would be justifiably like okay but it's literally like idiot man idiot orange man ordered a bunch of burger king for some high schooler like things but like you're treating it like like this huge thing that is obviously occupying a lot of my mental and emotional status which doesn't need to happen yeah but it just does because that's how we're programmed as people well when you're when you're on twitter depending on who you're following in groups like if there's a big if there's a big like awards show or a big event or a big conference part of the fun is like surfing the wave of like seeing everybody else who is also doing or consuming the thing you know all the people that are at you know, maybe a game con or maybe some other con. Uh, but then I think that also flows into, you know, things that are blown out of proportion. And then there's also the riding the wave of, like, bad tragedies and, like, that seeps into it. But, like, either way, it's all occupying a bunch of mental space. And sometimes you want to make space away from that. Yeah. Sometimes that's cool. Sometimes what you want is entirely dependent on who you're following and what you're seeing. But not being on... Twitter or much of the internet for about a month. I basically didn't really have that, so I felt a little less like thrown around in a roller coaster from just absorbing that stuff. Well, and also, like, I think we both felt less hopeless. Yeah. Just in life. And because we felt less hopeless, we felt more empowered to do things in our daily life. Like, our house is pretty clean for what it is. We, like, started vacuuming consistently, like, almost every day, just because we could um we like cleaned the house and the house has been kept in a more cleanly state just because we can we like don't have the emotional drainage of like well the world sucks so why should i bother picking that up um and the other thing is is like if you're bored you just can't distract yourself with the internet and so instead you just do the thing and then if you do all the things uh, and you just still have a bunch of free time, you get to do something meaningful meaningful that is a distraction or a leisurely activity instead of a passive leisure activity like surfing the internet. So, like, I read so many books in December. I read, like, 20-something books. They're Discworld books, so they're shorter, like, short little paperbacks, but, like, I read them, and I'm still reading them, and I enjoy them a lot. Yeah, and I... Decided I still did want to hear about news and things happening, but less sensationalized, so um, we booted up Tiff's old Kindle that she gave me a while ago, and I subscribed to a weekly news magazine on it so that I can read about what happened in the last week in a, le- in a more steady yeah. fashion. Because I had the thing where I would just try to consume as much as possible about something in the endless rabbit hole, and then I would also yeah. procrastinate and not do other stuff. So I'm not necessarily saying you should do this. But that's just something that I noticed. Is like, well, I still want news, but I don't want it in the way that I was doing it. So, yeah. So, um, anyway, world without internet was great. I actually really enjoy it. I started using a software to schedule tweets, and I actually really enjoyed that. So I'm gonna do that more. I've been unfollowing people more strongly. I've been muting retweets like crazy. Um, for certain people, because the people that I follow are generally pretty good. It's the retweets that get me, and I don't want to unfollow them. I just, you can mute retweets, so there's that. Um, I did catch myself just, like, surfing the internet today, like, just trying to kill time while I was working on something, and that is something that I was annoyed that I was doing, um, and so I kind of want to go back to, like, the no internet and be very restrictive in that, so I might actually go back to a no internet no social media rule for like a month or more um, because these systems are designed specifically to suck you in and to get you in. So there's that. Um, But this question, you can mute retweets. You have to do it directly through the Twitter page, which kind of sucks, but you can. 
Um, somebody asked what these boxes are, and I've already forgotten the brand. They're on the inside. Well, it says Dex Protection. I don't know if that logo helps. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but they're like velvet, crush lined, and they have magnet enclosures. Um, and then I bought curtain dividers, just like normal whatever dividers, and they're kind of big for these, but they work. Didn't you have to cut them down a little bit or no? No, they worked. They're snug. Um... So yeah, we like these. They're pretty. And they're like fake vegan leather. They're, they're vegan leather, not fake vegan leather. Um, so yeah, we like these. We bought these because we often... <laughs> Keyforge is the current CCG that we're playing. Uh, but we've played Destiny in the past. We've had like bouts of playing weird magic offsets, like unstable. So I figured we could get these and then uh, whatever we're playing currently, we'll just live in these boxes. So when we are done with Keyforge, we'll... Either sell all our keyforge or we'll put it in a more permanent storage solution, and then these will be like whatever is next. So yeah. weirdly, I wonder that blister popped. In in the future, I know keyforge thing. You know they'll yeah. Back to keyforge. If you're saying, hey, I want to offload all my keyforge jacks, and it's in the future, and these are all from the first set, I do wonder if people will be interested in getting. Yeah. Like groups of ducks from the previous set and then picking out the one or two or whatever ducks they want from there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know there's probably people already house ruling deck building, but I feel like there's some deck building that you could just break some stuff. Um, aside from doing like tournament play or play with other people, I'm honestly not super interested in getting any more decks. I feel like we have a good, aside from a time traveler deck, but I'm not going to search that out. I'm not gonna yeah. keep buying until I get that. Um, so I'm like, did I get a time traveler in here? Titan mechanic. Uh, Skippy time hog! Hmm? There's a Skippy time hog in there. Is that the time traveler? No, it's not. Sadly. Um, but either way, I'm really happy with the decks that we have. We have some decks that are definitely flops. We have some decks that are good. But I think we're gonna do like an internal tournament to get the decks down to like good and bad and then probably yeah. figure out a way to get rid of the ones that were kind of like meh on. Either giving them to somebody, maybe selling them for five bucks. I don't really know how to get rid of Keyforge decks. Um, so yeah. yeah um, that's, that's tricky. Yeah. Because it's funny because I know something like Magic obviously... You can always get rid of your singles. They will find a home, even if they're, yeah. Even if you're giving them away, that you know, people do. Like silly, stick your hand in the bucket of commons and random cards and pull out and construct a deck. Tournaments like they do, sell singles or whatever. But keyforge decks because they all, I don't know, like. It's weird. There's supposed there's an aftermarket on eBay for decks um, that people will buy them, uh, and you just like post the deck list and like how much you want. But honestly, I feel like for us, we'll probably just be like, we'll make like a uh, what's it called, like a group of decks that we just don't want, and then we'll just sell them uh, just to get rid of them. Um. Somebody, John Edwards asked earlier, uh, for the convention, will Ichi be there? Ichi will be there. So the dogs, so the one town, it's stumptowngamesummit.com. So stumptowngamesummit.com is where you can find out more information. It's May 18th in Portland. Next year, it's hopefully going to be longer. Um, but because it's the first year, we can only get like one day. It's pretty expensive. We wanted to see how ticket sales did before we expanded it. Um... But it's a, we're going to have a library that'll be our library, plus Jonathan Liu's library, plus a secondary library, and then you can bring games to play. It's 15 hours of gaming at the Holiday Inn, which has great parking, good seating, food is allowed inside, all that kind of stuff. Um, the dogs are not technically allowed, but they're going to make a guest visit at some point in the day. Steve will come and bring the dogs, and the dogs will say hi to everybody, and then we'll go home. Um, so we'll have a doggy visit, um, because of course, um, so yeah, but otherwise that's kind of that, um, as far as the keyboard stuff goes, um, I don't, I don't know if 
the it, some stores might want keyboard decks. I don't really know. Uh, the store that I work for doesn't have any store decks, and I don't know if they want store decks. Not really sure. So yeah. Yeah, I, as as a game, we're definitely enjoying it. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed. I haven't really played in a lot of like competitive formats with other people, but I enjoyed how casual the tournament we played was, and partly that's probably because the game is new-ish. Um, and a lot of the people were still some level of... Some of the people were still like novices or still figuring it out, and everybody was pretty casual. And I think part of that was... It was sealed. You just had to play with the deck you got. Yeah, it's not like so. one of those where people roll in and they're like, oh, I've bought five booster boxes to afford to build this deck. And you're like, great. I'm gonna lose, because this is a starter deck plus three boosters I got. You know what I mean? So, Keyforge is nice in that regard, but there is definite skill. The people who won were obviously the people who had played the most in the sealed tournament that we did. Um, but... So there is skill with the decks that you have and figuring out combos and playing. And with sealed tournaments, there are seven factions. So you have to know how all seven factions work and, like, all the different cards in the yeah. factions and, like, how you combo them. And you also, so, you, yeah. you do know the factions that the other person is playing before you've seen any cards. So, yeah, you can start to formulate strategy. Uh, one thing also I liked is... Even if you're obviously not doing well against someone, you can still set mini goals... And, you know, one of which is, like, if you can just try to forge one more key or get more amber. Like, in the tournament we were playing, the rules were uh, people were ranked not just on their wins and losses, but also how many keys they forge in each game. So you can still, even if you're losing, you can still try to do something to get some points or get closer. So it's, you can be in a hopeless game where, you know, someone has two keys and you have none, but you can still, like, try to slow them down long enough to forge one key. Or just get a key. And that was the other thing is that... That I like about Keyforge is that it's not about destroying each other. It's not about fighting and taking life. Yes, you can fight because your creatures can be used to get you Amber, which forges keys. And people can disrupt that by destroying your creatures by fighting them. But it's not a... It's not just about killing people. Um, because if that's all you do in the game, you're not going to forge keys unless you just happen to have cards that play off that. And there's only one faction that does that. It's Brodnar. There's only one faction that gives you Amber for fighting, and that's Brodnar. So I like that. I like that, um, there's not an emphasis on killing and fighting like there is in Magic. Um, and also because you don't win by fighting necessarily, if you do have a strategy that relies on fighting... You kind of need your opponent to play ball. Like, I had some times playing Brabnar today where it was like, you know, gain an amber every time you fight or whatever, and Tiffany had no creatures. It was like, well, I literally can't fight if she doesn't put out any creatures for me to fight. So it's like, that's actually a better position for her to be in of not having a lot of creatures. Um, one thing I like is there seems like there's enough cards that counter certain things, certain situations which are very good for your opponent, like... They have a lot of creatures, I can destroy them. They have a lot of, or I have a lot of amber, Tiffany can just send a bunch back to the pool and destroy it. Like, there's a bunch of sort of, like, wacky, rule breaking ways to get at someone when they're, like, way ahead. Yeah, but it's still really deck-dependent. Um, yeah. Laggy asks, did you hear that friendly local game stores have the option to order their store name as a custom keyboard deck name if they go to Gamma and order boxes? I did hear that, and now the internet has as well. Thank you, Laggy. Um, the YouTube chat is talking about what they played in 2018. Ooh, Spirit um, Island. I've only played that once, but... Or no, twice? No. Once. Just once, yeah. yeah. Um, I like that. I would play that again. There was a question over in that side, but it's good. I think we've run long. Um, yeah. The... That was... that. So, yeah, that's our return to streaming. Um, this is, like, the most I've talked... <laughs> one straight period for a while. Um, so yeah, that was a good welcome to 2019. I did a Patreon post earlier today with uh, some various information about 2018 and uh, 2019 and what's happening. Um, and the big question is: there's lots of projects, lots of plates spinning, lots of I don't know for what this year holds for this channel and my Patreon and things like that. Um, there's like two, there's like 
two and a half paths I can take, and it's it's kind of dependent on what ends up happening. And part of it's out of my control. So we'll see what happens. Uh, good news is my health stuff is better. You snowboarded. Care. I snowboard. Well, I went skiing. Um, ski. yeah. So for like 12 months, over 12 months, I have been uh, sick. Uh, the doctors don't know what, but it's put me in the ER a few times. Um, I've had lots of tests, lots of doctors. I've had seven different doctors. Um, and the current theory from my current doctor, who I like a lot, is that I have or had a horatial hernia, um, which they did catch on film. They caught a herniation in my chest cavity back in May, which is like way TMI. But, um... When your chest wall herniates, uh, it can go in and out. But it hurts like the dickens when it's herniated. Um, but they can't actually diagnose it unless your doctor sees an image of it. And even then, it's kind of like this, like, uh, if it's herniated a lot, and if it's herniated frequently, and if it's herniated for a long period of time... There's things that they can do, but otherwise they're kind of like, time just has to heal it. So... So they're basically, like, if it gets to the point that they could diagnose it, you're kind of hosed. Yeah, if it gets to the point... it's happening that much. Yeah, yeah, if it gets to the point where they're going to diagnose it, it's just going to suck for me. But one of the current theories is, is that the place and the thing that is herniated into my chest cavity is uh, affecting my heart. Because there is a nerve that is, like, right close to where my herniation is and if something herniates it will hit that nerve and that nerve disrupts how my heart beats which sucks so Don't you need that? a little bit so for the last year i have had a lot of problems with breathing with my pulse with um if i got my heart rate to like 100 110 and it maintained for like five minutes i would start having painful chest pains it was, like, weird. Weird, bad stuff. And VR was always like, yeah, no, this is a thing. We don't know what it is, but it's a thing. Go see your doctor. And my doctor would be like, I don't know. Go see a specialist. And the specialist would be like, hmm, seems healthy. Don't know. And it was just because they just could never get the imagery just right. And they got the imagery right once in May. But by the time they ordered me to, like, go to a fancier specialist... The wait period to see that specialist was so long that it had resolved itself temporarily for that situation. So it's just, my health for 2018 was just awful. It was just, it was awful. But um, in 2019, I was skiing and I did sustained cardiovascular activity for a long enough time period that my doctor is like, yeah, you're not going to die. So <laughs> I've been cleared to do, basically to resume my normal lifestyle and activity, which is, like, huge for me because it's been 12 months. About a months. year, yeah. Yeah. Because you had your surgery, like, January 4th or whatever. Yeah, it's been almost 12 months. Um, We still don't know exactly. That's the current, like, it's not an official diagnosis. That's the, like, in theory diagnosis. But to get an official one is really hard on that. But that's, like, what we're thinking is happening. But I'm getting better which means that it's probably healing itself and i can actually do things um my mom even commented and was like because she came and visited us in march and she we went for like a hike and she was like i thought you were gonna die like i thought she told me she was like you looked like death warmed over and then we went out for a hike with my family in colorado in like august or sometime here september september and i couldn't make it like past the parking lot i was just like even my nieces I looked so sick, my nieces were treating me, like, with kid gloves. So... Yeah, the ele- you couldn't do elevation gain. It was too much of a strain. Yeah, I, I couldn't do anything that taxed my heart or my lungs. So, we're at the point now where I can do that, uh, which is great. Yeah, which we is did amazing. a, what, a two, one, one mile round trip hike? That was, like, up in the hill? Two mile round trip? We did a two mile round trip hike, and I pulled Ichi with the wagon, which was huge. Um, it's a big wagon. Uh, but yeah so my health is much better thank you everybody that has been helpful and supportive for this year Um, and because my health is more 
better. It means that I can do more of what I want in 2019, which is great, but that means I have a lot of options on my roads. So we're trying to figure out what exactly that is. Um, but yeah. Um, the hernia, if it is a hiliacial hernia, if it is what the current theory is, it will eventually heal on its own unless I do something extremely stupid, but they, <sighs> doctors, man, they don't, it's not doctors, it's the human body and the health network. There's no way to know for sure how to solve this herniation problem except for surgery, but even surgery cannot solve it. And so it's one of those things where they're like... Yeah, you solved your last problem with surgery. Yeah, so there's these things where they're like, these things might work for it. So for right now, I'm doing the things that might work for it. But basically for the last... I have had marked, marked improvement in my health for the last five months. I still have bad days, but, like, I'm at the point now where they're like, yeah, no, you are improving, and so just keep doing what you're doing. And unless something really bad happens and you land in the ER again, uh, we're not going to... So I'm on a two-month trial period with my doctor right now where we're just going to see what happens for two months. No specialists, no more tests, no anything. My last test was in December, and it came back fine, but not great. <laughs> so we're just... We're just going to play it by ear. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's the update on me because I didn't put that in my Patreon post because it was weird. But part of the Patreon post was there's some stuff happening. Don't know what 29 is going to lead to, but we are going to stream for Expansuary. So for January and February, for like last half of January and most of February, we do a themed stream time period and the theme this year is expansuary for 2019 steve and i are not purchasing any new forms of entertainment so we're not purchasing any games we're not backing kickstarters we're not buying books we're not buying dvds we're not doing anything that brings physical objects into the house with some minor exceptions if we participate like, like food f food's not really entertainment but if we participate in keyforge sealed tournaments we obviously would bring the keyforge deck home but it's more about we're we're participating at the tournament at the place. Um, so because of that, the theme for this expansionary, for this Uary period, yeah. is expansionary. So we are streaming expansions of some of our favorite games. So one of the things that we do is we often just stream the base game, and we'll only stream the base game. Uh, we don't stream expansions a lot, and so this month is all about expansions. So we're going to be playing some of our favorite games and the expansions for those games, including Leaving Earth, um, Fields of Arl, Caverna's new expansion, uh, Whistle Stop. Um, I'm going to try and get the Heaven and Nail expansion that's been announced but not released. I'm going to try and get like a, a preview. Um, but I there's still need to play the Cry Havoc expansion we got at Essen Cry two Havoc? years ago. Yeah. I really want to play that, and the figures have been in like painting limbo since then, so I want to get that to the table and play it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got games with expansions that we haven't played. Sadly, we already played Zaya with the main expansion. I haven't gotten missions and powers in the mail. Oh, Kabuki asked if I got the Deep Space D6 expansion. I did, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it was modular enough that I liked it. Like I think I played a base game with the base ship with the upgrade cards, which was great. So I'm looking forward to playing that more and mixing that up. No, yeah. oh, well, and he played the other day uh, at a thing and, and lost. I heard all about it. Um. So yeah. So expansionary. We're gonna be doing that uh for the month of Uary, the Uary months. Uh, next week's stream will probably. Caverna? Um, the with the fairy folks? The fairy folks expansion. Um, so, yeah. Um, that is that. Also, Luke, um, since I've gotten the go-ahead from my doctor, I've started doing yoga again. Which is great. For over a year, I haven't done yoga, roller skating, snowboarding, skiing. I couldn't, like, walk. I couldn't, couldn't ride a bike. I couldn't ride a bike. I would have heart chest pains. I couldn't walk Ichi around the block. And Ichi is arthritic and slow. And I could not walk my own dog around our very short block um, for, like, the longest time. And now I can walk her... I can walk her further than she can walk. So she has a little wagon that we, we take with us and then she rides. Um, so, yeah. But, um, 
Yeah. No, we are not doing... We're going to do new games in 2019, but we are not purchasing any games until Origins is our limit. And our goal is to get through our Limbo shelf. And there are some new titles on our Limbo shelf, but we're going to play those either on camera or off. And my goal, I have a bunch of games which I have just not played, which have been hanging around my collection. So my goal is to learn and get through a bunch of those. And Tiffany is going to play some of them, which are two-player, and I will play the other one solo. Not necessarily to stream, I just need to get through those. And I'm using the excuse of No New Shinies to do that. Yeah, and it helps a lot. Um, no New Shinies also includes No New Ebays. No, no new purchases in the house. Uh, so like nothing used, nothing like that. There is exceptions. Obviously, if we are given games by publishers, then we will obviously take those and, and play them, but we're not buying them, we're not playing them, and for the most part, I'm not seeking them out. There's a couple expansions that I'm seeking out to see if we can get those sponsored, but otherwise, I'm just not worrying about it. So, yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing for 2019. For early 2019, that's what we're doing for Uary. Uh, it's Expansuary. Uh, so tune in next week for the Fairy Folk expansion for Caverna. And... Yeah. Oh, oh, also, oh. we'll be doing a video series, or I'll be doing a video series about the games that we're purging and getting rid of and going through. Because people are really interested in that. You know what game we have that had an expansion in the box? Oh, no. I won't say that. We have a lot of games that have expansions in We have a lot of games that have expansions. We do not have Western Legends... Um, it's not my kind of game. Oh well, yeah, we'll leave it there. It's not my kind of game, uh, so we don't have Western Legends, um, and thus we won't have the expansion. Sorry. I don't know Western Legends. <laughs> cowboy, cowboy thing. Yeah. Like a rustling cattle cowboy game or a bang bang cowboy game. It's like Scythe in the Old West. Oh, with the robots. Like Wild Wild West with the mm. big giant robots, like no. and giant. No. Okay. No. Not like Cause that. Because that I would. That's a crossover I would play. Like Wild Wild West side. <laughs> Technically, there's an expansion for Nemo's War. <laughs> yes, and I have the uh, first tiny one. But... Yeah. All right. It. This is the longest we've talked in a long time. We could play another game of Key Forge. It was really weird to play keyboard without the playmats. We've been playing yeah. with playmats and we didn't because... Uh, it was weird to play side by side. Yeah, it was weird to play side by side. Mm. Do you want to play mm. again off camera? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Can you just go read books? Mm-hmm. Oh, also, no streams on Thursdays. I have an uh, obligation now on Thursdays, so no Thursdays. But Steve could solo stream on Thursdays. We'll see. I'm interested in that idea. It depends on the game and on the Thursday. So. Yep. All right. Thank you again for hanging out, or thank you for hanging out oh. with us. And Vince is trying to play a solo game once a week on average. I would the solo fifty two challenge challenge. I'll keep that in mind. I might be interested in doing like a solo twenty six challenge or something. No one's stopping us. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, on that delightful note, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, which was very long and not always about KeyForge, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe. Uh, and it might sneeze again. Um, <laughs> Your sneezes are contagious, but they're contagious as yawns. <laughs> Um, th- if you're watching live with us, thank you for hanging out. Uh, so we missed you. Thank yes, you for hanging out with you. you. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those fun things where it's like, one of the things that not having internet consistently meant is that we went and hung out with people in real life, and that was really great, and we got to see people, but we still missed each other. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You all are fun, good people, um, and we like hanging out with you. So, we will see you all next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in, and have a good week. Also, play games, have fun, be happy. Good night.